Ladies and gentlemen, we are the Conscious Partners Network. We are Rockers Corner Radio. Allah. Stock A Promotions Radio. Allah. Kingdom Allah. Nubia Radio. Allah. Stone Vimes Radio. Allah. Into On Air Radio. Allah. Culture Vimes Radio. Allah. Mix Dynamic Radio. Allah. Afro Carib Radio. Allah. Reggae Wave Radio. Allah. Reggae Storm Radio. We are raising the awareness of artists across the globe. The Reggae Business Talk Show is a show about knowledge, a show about information, a show where we arm you, the artist, with the tools needed to navigate your way through the music business, the business of music. Sit back and relax and listen. This is the Reggae Business Talk Show on Stockade Promotions Radio. The information given on this radio program is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. I want to say greetings to each and everyone once again. You're welcome to another edition of the Reggae Business Talk Show. I'm General Culture, the moderator of this show. And uh, once again, it's an absolute pleasure to welcome you all to another edition of the Reggae Biz Talk Show. As per usual, I'm going to make a link with my guests who are on standby. So just keep it locked, okay? Okay, is the panel ready? Yes, sir. Do yeah, we? we're ready. We're ready. I'm here. Okay. Greetings to the entire panel and greetings to all our listeners out there. Maximum respect and once again, welcome to another edition of the Reggae Business Talk Show. How is everyone doing today? Great. And yourself? I'm good. My voice is on its way out, so I'm just going to work with it. <laughs> well, yeah, work with it. I'm working with Can it. I, yeah. No I, singing in general. Yeah. No singing in general. Go ahead, go ahead, Chris. I say no singing in general. <laughs> <laughs> hey, general. Yes. I just want to take a special moment to big up Bunny Lee, though, because it's his birthday today. Okay. And we are reggae and dub blessed to have him as a producer and all his comp- contributions all this year. So I just want to make sure we give a special, you know, happy birthday to Bunny Lee because he's really special to the business, you know. Bless up the one and, and only up Bunny Lee. Bunny Lee, yeah. happy Earth Strong. Bunny and Lee. today is a very special day because not only is it Bunny Lee's Earth Strong, Fitzroy Francis alerted me to the fact that Usain Bolt beat Justin Gatlin. Yes, sir. Oh, wow. Congratulations, Jamaica, once again. I, I tell you, I was watching it on YouTube, and what a close call it was. Yeah. <laughs> okay, yeah, we're, we're, we're going to start with our uh, show today. Well, I don't expect it, but... Uh, okay, the, the sound quality no. here is no good. It really is no good. It's, and uh, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hang up with everyone and see if the scientists can close up the circuit. Uh, I'm just going to try that one more time, yeah? So let's see if we can make that happen because the, the sound quality is absolutely terrible. Can, can, can you hear me? I can hear you. Let me do a sound check with Lady uh, I, General. I, I think his, what's his name, Mike? Fitzroy. Yeah. yeah. Okay, let me just do a sound check with you, sir. Can it's Fitzroy, Mike. Fitzroy, can you hear me? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, better. Do, do a sound I'm check with me. Keep talking, Fitzroy. Okay, there's something wrong with your mic. Yeah, Fitzroy. Okay, there's something wrong. It's either with his mic or the connection. Chris, are you there? I'm here. Can you hear me? You on the phone, Fitzroy, or what? Yeah, me on the phone. Oh, on the phone, me always on now. Okay. 
Yeah, I think you're probably in the same place in the room all the while. Yeah, the signal. Yeah, your signal seems You don't have the radio on in the same room, do you? Okay. Mm-hmm. No. Oh. So one well, I'm going to turn on the laptop. I'm going to turn on the laptop kind of uh, uh, concord. But I'm going to turn the laptop up. Give okay. me a minute. Me, okay. Go on, first see. Like, right, like, like right now, it's on clear up now. No, let, let let him do what he has to do, and then he can add us back onto the uh, yeah, chat. Add, add, add back on. Yes, yes, do that, please. Yes, okay. uh, we are missing uh, Roddy Campbell. He has something urgent to do, so Roddy Campbell will not be with us this evening. Um, and if he does join us, um, he'll make himself known. We're going to start with the introduction as per usual. I'm going to start with the scientist. Please introduce yourself. Tell us who you are. Um, Optan Brown, a.k.a. The Scientist, um, Recording Engineer, Electronic Engineer, and your muser. Thank you. Uh, who else do we have? Chris. Yes, greetings, everyone. I'm Chris Hills, and um, we're a small management and record label company named Coffee and Cream. So I'm representing that side of it. Thank you, Chris. Lady G. Yes, greetings everyone. This is Lady General from Stockade Promotions Radio and Stockade Promotions. I'm a radio DJ. I've also owned two sound systems and in my professional life, I'm a paralegal and a realtor. Thank you. Uh, who else do we have? W. Do. Yeah, this is W. Do, uh, mixer, engineer, producer, historian. Um, own a little label in the studio too, so just happy to be a part of it, man. Thank you so much. And I'm General Culture. I am the uh, CEO, founder of Stockade Promotions, Stockade Records, Stockade Radio, anything to do with Stockade. That's me, also an artist, producer, do so much in the industry. And uh, one of the yeah, things we... I'm back. I'm here, yeah, General. Yeah, that sounds good now. That sounds better. Yeah, it sounds 10 times better. Okay, uh, let, let's uh, do an introduction with uh, Fitzroy. Fitzroy, introduce yourself, please. Yeah, man, my name is Fitzgerald Francis. I have more than 13 records, you know. I don't know, producer, songwriter, music, um, road manager, you know, poet, and, you know, active in the business over the years. And, you know, it's my pleasure to be here today again on the Reggae Bay Show. And thanks all the listeners and all the network that bring this program alive. Thank you, Fitzroy. And uh, I want to bless up all our conscious partners, uh, Reggae, uh, let's see, uh, Rockers Corner Radio, we're simulcasting on uh, Rockers Corner Radio out to Detroit, Michigan, and Stone Vibes Radio out to, uh, let's see, Texas, Houston, Texas. So we are simulcasting on those two stations, maximum respect. Uh, we're going to start with the show, and uh, it is nice to know that we have various people all over the world who are listening to our shows um we did have uh and, and let me just make mention that what i'm trying to encourage is towards the end of the show we're trying to encourage you know anybody who has any questions to pose any questions that you might have what i'm also trying to do is get you to call into the show today we're going to start that procedure back to front because the guest that we have on today has an awesome story. I'm not going to introduce her. I'm going to let Chris do that a little bit later. But we do have a listener who um, was listening to one of our shows. I do believe it was the second show he was listening to. And he wanted to raise one or two things uh, with that show that we were listening to. So what I'm going to do very quickly is play this uh, intro one more time while I try to connect with him. So just stay uh, put and uh, I'll be back with you shortly. Okay, what I'm going to have to do is I'm going to have to hang up with everyone because of this circuit that, that is showing on my screen. So I'm going to hang up and add this guy and then bring you all back, yeah? Okay, let's do this one more time. You there? I'm here. Oh, 
Yeah, I'm here. That's much better. That's yeah, much I'm better. here. Okay, so now we're making a link with Paul Michael Campbell. Is, is that Paul Michael Campbell? Yes, it is. Uh-huh. Okay, this is General Culture from Stockade Records. Uh, you, you contact... Okay, but yeah, I recognize the voice. Yes. All right, yes. can you hear me okay? Hello? Can you hear me okay? Yes, I'm hearing you okay. Uh-huh. Okay, you're coming through very, very faint. Um, we're we're going to work with that. Um, I want to thank you for listening to our shows. And uh, we're starting our show back to front this week. Uh, so, and, and you do have a question. And when I read your question, I couldn't really make sense of really what you were trying to say. Um, so I want to give you that opportunity live on the air to uh, tell us what you were trying to say so that we can address that live on the air. Uh, just introduce yourself and tell us who you are and what you do and then pose your question. Okay, I- I'm live on air just now? You are live on air right now. Okay. And so also, l- let me Campbell. just stop you. Let me just stop you because I have to introduce our panel here. We have the scientists, we have Fitzroy Francis, we have Dobby Do, and we have Lady General and Chris Hill. So go ahead and pose your questions. The question, the question I was asking um, the, the person, the panelist who said a producer does not have the right to assign the song, that is correct. But when he goes on to say the performer has the right, this is where I differ, and I, I will explain as soon as um, I'm, I'm given the opportunity to explain that situation. Did everybody hear that? Yeah, if you could put the mic a little closer to his, his mouth, though, it sounds like him, him, him talking at the side of the mic. Okay. I, I, okay. I, think, I think what I heard him said that the producer don't have the right, but the performer has the right. Is that correct? No, no. That's what I'm disputing. That is not the performer, nor... It, 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 it depends it depend on the situation because if the performer write the song, if the uh, performer does not that, write the song, that then then it's, so that, it's that that that's what I, that's what I need to explain. That can I go ahead and explain in detail then? Yeah, yeah, go ahead. Good. Okay. Um, basically, if the song writer, whether you wear um, two or three caps or whatever, but let's 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 keep it simple. It is a songwriter that controls the song. And he has what we call a publishing term, chap right. I'm, I'm trying to move away and a moment from the church. There's a church near to me and they're, they're singing just now. So let us down the outside and go down the bottom. Okay. But in the meantime, as I say, um, the chap right are three of the exclusives copyright of a song because every recorded song has two copyrights one for the song composition which is the lyrics and the melody and then the other one the sound recorded and within those two copyrights are six exclusive copyrights that dictates and drives the music and the money in the business of music. Any anyone want to pose a question? Uh, should I continue? Well, go 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 on, let, go, on, go on somewhere. Let me hear 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 where 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 you're leading it to. Okay, the songwriter is the person who writes the song, and the composer, the the sheet music, which is the melody. And that is the person, he or she, king or queen of the song because they own the song. So the sound recording part, which is normally owned by the producer if he pays the money to finance the session, or the label, that's a separate copyright for the song composition. One person can own all, all of it. For instance, the situation that um, Francis just explained a while ago is correct. 
if the person is a songwriter and a performer and even possible a producer or a label owner, you can own all of the copyrights. But in principle, the person who writes the song is the author and he shares what you call the writer's share. The publishing mm -hmm. share, the publishing share, the share is the, between the publisher and the songwriter if the songwriter assigns the publishing to a publisher. A songwriter normally assigns the song to a publisher because the publisher would have a network and he has the apparatus to exploit the musical value of the song. While the songwriter, he be able to concentrate on writing the song and he doesn't have necessarily have that network to exploit the song. Because wait, 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 wait a moment here. I think, I think we have some stuff that, that's not properly defined. All right. Um, let, let me see if I understand you. Um, or, or let me say it this way. Um, the, 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 the pie is split up in, 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 in two first, um, part, the person who write the lyrics and then the person who writes the music, like the drum, the bass and so forth. Those are the two defaults owner, right? If, if a producer goes into the studio, right? And he spends money, right? He has a right, but, but he, doesn't, he doesn't own the copyright on the song unless the artists and the people who create the music decide that for whatever reason they're going to sign it to him. Are we on the same page there? No, um, the, the song composition is owned by the songwriter. Wait, wait, wait. We have two, we have, remember, we have two, let me explain it again. We have two sections. The people who write the lyrics and the people who create yeah. the music, right? Good. That, that, that is one. You call it the song composition. No, 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 no. It's two different parts. The person who write the lyrics, that's one person. That's the default owner. And then the person who, who, who the people who come up with the music. Two two and different then, and, then, and then and then and then say and then say the structure of a song is this is, is the composition which is basically the sheet music, which is the melody. And the the lyrics, which is basically notation. Lyrics on its own is not a song. It has to have the melody. No, 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 no. No, no, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Sorry, sorry to interrupt you, but no. If you write bling, bling, blah, blah, blue, 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 and you yeah. go register that, and somebody take bling, bling, blah, blah, blue, 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 and use it in any way, that person owns that. Lyrics alone does not make a song. Huh? It has to be, lyrics alone does not make a song. What, it what has you, to be no, no, no. I, and and I, I'm going to refer you to what the law is, you know, and I'm going to refer you to, to Jamaica web, website. Right? Jamaica website with, with, with um, that, that tell you what the copyright. It, 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 um, Lady G, can you find it? It protects literally an artistic, artistic work. So any kind of a literature, original literature, any kind of a sculpture, painting, the person who created the first owner. So, so unless you're not, you, I don't think you're properly defining these things. Like again, no, no, no. Copyright is an original expression in tangible form, fixed. Okay, written or recorded. Uh, okay, so let me ask you, Louis Bennett, write, 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 um, write something. Rania Miss Lou, write something, right? Who owns a, yeah. who, who owns that? I don't, I don't know what you're you referring to because if well, the melody is not there, a, a, it's a not point. a song. It, a it, it's just somebody play. somebody write, writes a poem. Yes. Right? Who is the owner of the person who come up with the first poem? Mary had a little line. Poetry, yeah. poetry is different from a song. That's what I'm saying. No, no, but is you any, have to, any... You have to have melody. You have to have melody with a song. Lyric well, and that, melody. No, no, no. No. He, here's why you're wrong. You have spoken words that has no melody yes. to it, correct? Uh-huh. 
The spoken right. word is not a song. Hey, 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 li listen, you're not defining <laughs> it correctly. Anybody who uh -huh. write anything, any kind of a writing, it could be a poem that you recite in school, it could be yeah. spoken word. The person who writes that is the default owner. If somebody go and write out lyrics, uh, um, I'm a Natty Dread, I'm a Natty Dread, and it doesn't have any melody to it. I'm a Natty Dread, I'm a Natty Dread. And then Bob Marley pick up that same, I'm a Natty Dread, I'm a Natty Dread, and own it, and, and, and sing it. It's not Bob Marley own that lyrics, right? No, it, no, no it, it doesn't own the lyrics, but the melody, that's the it, 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 yeah, so, so, you're the so you're contradicting yourself I'm not, now. I'm not contradicting. Of course you're contradicting yourself. Mm. All, I'm, all I'm going to tell you to do is to call TRS, ask we, up, hey, 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 no, 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 Chief. Scientist. He's wrong. He's off. Scientist. Yeah. Hold a second. I'm going to define a song. A song is a short-term poem. A word, set of words, set to music, are meant right. to the be melody, sung. Good. The melody, so the melody. Oh, the melody is a different thing. The melody is that's la 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 la. That's, that's the melody. Hold on, scientist. Let let Fitzroy talk. Go ahead, Fitzroy. Define Fitzroy. what a song is in a country. Our lyrics is not a song, but a song is a short poem, set of words, set to music, are meant to be sung. So right. Once the lyrics is structured. And it's meant to be sung. It is a song. So it's therefore, set to, it's set to music. It's set meant to, music. to be. No, Even if it don't set to music. Word, words set to music are meant to be sung. That means you can have a lyrics, and you're gonna sing that lyrics. And you don't even have any music to it yet. So you it's still got like a song a cappella. Because, um, yeah. Yes, it, that's it, like, like a cappella. Right. Right. That's like an a cappella. Exactly. If you have an a cappella, it's still the same thing. Okay, okay, so let, let me, hold on, let me hold ask on. him it this way. You can proceed. Loser, let me ask him it this way. So if somebody sings a a cappella that is not copyrightable, no man, as long as the person sings the melody is there. No, no, it has no melody. It. There's ha no, it has oh, no yeah. melody to it. A melody mm -hmm. is la 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 la. That's like a melody. That's different from saying naughty dread, naughty dread, naughty dread, the words you want. Right? Are you are you all of what you saying And uh, no, no, no. I, answer, I, I, answer I, I, the I question. No, no. Let, let's answer the question. Um, yes. La 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 la. That you agree that that's, that's melody. melody. That's melody. All right, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hold on. And you agree that Natty Dread, Natty Dread, Natty Dread are what you want. You agree that's lyrics, right? Yeah. Right. So that's yeah. You agree that's two different parts, right? Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah All right. So so hold on, man. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on, man. So if la 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 la, um, Fitzroy come with la 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 la. Right, and then Matt, and then uh, Bob Marley, our uh, Fitz, our uh, our uh, um Chris come over with Natty Dread, what she want. Right, that means that Chris own Natty Dread, what she want, and Fitz right own la 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 la. You agree with um, that? Um, no, 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 no. Look here, a song can be owned by one or a number of people, and this and this is why, whenever you you, you finish a song. It's very important for you to in there, decide and how you share the song. For instance, if a four or five person write a song, what you need, need to, to do is to wait in there, find out what portion the person contributed to the they, song. They, they would be co-writers. When you're going to register the song, you don't, they, you they, don't, they, you they don't necessarily they, they be co-writers. Huh? No, anybody who can no, anybody who contributes hold on hold on it's scientists hold on scientists let me hear they are not going to be co-writer with you if what they are big songwriters they're going to decide what portion you get hold on hold on hold on let me let, let, let me see if i understand him um one person come and write not to dread what she want not to dread him want and him write and him write x amount of line and not to dread what she want and then somebody has come Chris or somebody has come and uh, add about the same amount of lyrics to it or give ideas. You're saying that that person is not a songwriter? Of course, the person is a songwriter. I'm not saying right. that. Right, so, 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 so they co-wrote the song then? 
Yes, but you're not going to get the percentage of the persons that are big. It depends on what they contribute. If they, if, they, if they contribute equal amount. No. A big of writer. course. Come on. Come on, man. Come on. Come on. Come no, on. Okay, let me, okay, let me, hey, hey. okay, let me carry it yeah. a different direction. Let me carry it a different direction. Somebody inside of a studio, a bunch of musicians inside a studio, and, uh, and one person at the end of the song, they come and play Ping. That's the only thing that plays. That person, a writer. Are you asking me that the person is a writer? Yeah. If one, let me ask. Let me ask a question again. If mm. you have a band playing for three minutes, right? Yes. And at the end of the song, one person just come and play. Ping. <laughs> Is, that's is not that a song composition. That's no, 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 hey, no. That's not what I'm asking you. That's not what I'm asking you. That's not what I'm asking you. If at the end of the song, one person come and play a ping, yeah. right? And and then that last ping is pretty much what defines the song. It resolves the song. Is that person allowed to put down their name on the work registration form? Everybody allowed to put down their name. But okay, so, so, so hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. So if they put a name, that means they are a co-writer if they're allowed to put their name. No, no. That's Why not? But hey, it's, it's only writers can read it. It's only publish, writers can read the song. very complex, you know. Not because huh? four or five persons contribute to the song. That, that means that equal the amount. Of, that are five in people theory, have to object. That are five people. No. Go ahead. In theory, you know, it's okay. But I say, if it's a big writer... The person not going to allow you to take equal and amount they be, of be caught, And I'm going to explain the reason why that happens. It does not work that way. On the word registration form, it doesn't ask you how much bars you play, how much is that. It asks you what your role is, percussion is. It didn't ask if you play one or two or three line or if you just play a ping. It doesn't ask that. You, you, you're mixing up the sound recording with the sound company. No, no, no. Sound recording and, is and a complete... Hey, Chief, how long you been doing this? How how long you been me? doing this? How long you been, been in the business? I've I've been lecturing from at least um, nine. No, how long? Ninety from ninety five. From 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 ninety five. Okay. Yeah. Um, and what part of Jamaica you come from? Kingston, specifically. Kingston. The okay. So area. so you come after we left here then. Good. Yeah. So and, he, and, he, and, no, 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 chief. Here's what you, you no, know, you are not correct because you can't I'm, 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 I'm not going to stand here and dispute that. You know, I'm going to allow it up to you to decide what you want to do with your music. Well, but no, I can't no, tell no, no, no. We, we tell it. We tell it. We, we showing. We giving. I, we giving I you. I've been doing this, and I've been getting uh, with, you know, um, my clients money for them. Okay, so let, let me ask you a different way. Let me ask you a different way. Um, a bunch of musicians come inside the studio, right? Sly and Robbie or whatever, whoever come. And yeah. there is a work registration. You know the work registration form, right? Yes, I do. Okay. And it has the role that everybody put on it, right? Yeah. Okay. Does any part of the work registration says how much bar you play? I'm, I'm not looking at one. No, so I, I can't. No, I can't no, 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 no. I, I, I need to answer the question. Oh, no. Look here, look here, look. No, no, no. I'm trying to say no, you to said you see, you that said the you song recording is different from the song composition. No, no, that's not what we're talking about. That's not what we're talking about, right? We're talking about who owns what, right? The person. It, 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 it starts from. It starts from the person who write the lyrics and the set of people who create the music. If I set up people create the music together, because sometimes somebody can write a song um, years before it gets to the studio, say so anybody can hear it. You agree with that? Of course, you're coming right back to the point that I'm saying that the lyrics is separate from the melody. We, 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 we look here. The lyrics is separate from everything else. Right, and the Lyrics song recording separate. is separate from the song composition. Uh, of course, of course, the song recording, all of that is is is, is 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 different. So the point is, 
the, the, and, and then you can verify this on Jamaica own website. I'm qu- quoting. Um, uh, are you familiar with the Burning Convention? Of course, and not only the Burning Convention. The Rome Convention of 1961 allow well, 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 person yeah. like yourself, you know, person like yourself, the performer, the videographer, and all the musicians to receive money under what you call neighboring rights. Of and course. I'm getting, and I'm getting, I'm getting neighboring rights money for artists. A, 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 a news, a, a news um, release will be coming out in December. How many big labels from in the past that were getting it, that will really be getting their neighboring rights? I'm the so, one spearheading all of that. All right. So the person who come at the end of the song and play a ping, him don't entitled to anything. Of course, he entitled everybody. So, 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 so he's a co So he's a co right. So he's a co right to that. I, 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 I'm, I'm, uh, 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 no, 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 no. Scientists, he, he hold on, scientists. One, one second here, one second here, one second here. I don't think he understand oh, 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 what they call writing and how writing is defined. Writing is not just defined by a bunch of lyrics. Are we on the same page with that? You are correct, but you, you, you still misunderstand between the sound recording and the, so, and the sound composition. The That's song composition is broken up into two parts. It's broken up into the words, and it's broken up into the people who create the music behind the words. The melody, good. That's a different thing than melody. So that's like I, let, let, let me give you let me give you an example. Let I'm, me give I'm you gonna an give example. you two more minutes. Two a, a more minutes, and I'm gonna bring has, this to an end. Two more minutes, yeah. and I have to bring this to an end. Yeah. yeah. I, a drum line has no melody, right? You'd agree with that, right? Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. yeah, a drum line has no melody. So if slide on bar play him drum and like the, like um uh, taxi, for example, when Santa actually played the drum and taxi, the original, that means Santa is a writer. <laughs> right? Not and the writer, the, not the writer, not the writer of the lyrics, the words. Right, yeah, he's known as, as, as a writer. Scientist. The man who come, the man who come and play ping at the end of the song, he's also known as a writer. No, he's not a writer. No, what? A so, so, uh, okay. He's a, he's Listen, Paul, Paul, Paul hold, on, hold on. I, I must bring this to an end. And I want to thank Paul for coming on to the show. And maybe we can address this, you know, on, on further shows. I want everybody to, to anybody out there who has any questions pertaining to the music business, you are free to call into the show and pose your questions. And this is the kind of dialogue that I'm accepting onto the show. Uh, but I must bring it to an end because I must bring in my next guest before yeah, the show. Paul is off on that one. He's Paul, way off on that uh, Paul, one. I, I, Paul, I, I, I suggest you go study. <laughs> Paul, General Paul, okay, thank I, I you so much to, for I'm coming on the show. By bringing in next time, hold on, hold on, hold on, scientists. Sorry, Paul, say that again. I couldn't hear you. I, I, I would love to continue the discussion at another time on another program, and I, I'll bring in publishers, renowned publishers who, who, who are who are associated with PRS, and he was the chairman of PRS, Ellis, Ellis Rich. Never a I, problem. I, I would, I would I'd love to bring him in for him to clarify that part. I, I would love you to bring him so I can slap the garbage down his throat with facts. No, 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 no. Don't, don't address it that way. But, <laughs> but this is what this show is about. It's about learning each one, teach one. So we're all learning from this. But, but Paul, I want to thank uh, you thank, for coming on to the show. Again. Paul. And I, I do enjoy the show. And honestly, I like, I like the way you know, the kind of energy that um, scientists bring to this. Thank you so much. And uh, uh, please forgive my tone. Uh, uh, this is just me talking. No, no, I, 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 I understand. But I'm, I, I'm, I must say, I'm a lecturer at the VTDR in the entertainment event section. And um, we are making um, Jamaicans, um, young, young um, songwriters and performers aware of their rights. Right. And thank you so much, Paul. Thank you so much. And we'll keep the link. And uh, thank you once again for appearing on the show. Yeah. Thanks again. You're welcome. Thank you so much. So once again, that was uh, Paul 
Campbell, uh, who uh, had a question for us. And uh, that's what this show is all about, uh, learning. And, and that's what we all have to do is to learn from this. Um, I'm going to play, um, I tell you what, before I play the next piece, I want to come to Christopher Hills. Um, and over the last two weeks, um, Chris uh, approached me um, with a particular person who he felt um, needed to appear on the show. And normally any video which is more than 30 minutes long, I just cannot put my brain to it because I do so much. Anyway, after putting the link into my Facebook inbox, from the minute I pressed play, I couldn't stop listening. And what I heard blew my mind. And I said to Chris, Chris, this lady has to be on this show. So I'm going to come to Chris and tell us why he approached me with this particular individual. Right, <clears throat> I'm here. We're going to introduce a lady called Seven. And Seven is a very creative person. <clears throat> she's a musician and she's been in the musical business, but she's also created a number of things in the, the broad spectrum of the entertainment industry. When we've been doing, we're up to the 10th show now, and we've covered a lot of things on the show to do with copyright and asking people and pleading with people to register and copyright their works so that they're um, protected. But what we've been talking about is just really the music side and there's a much bigger picture to this and there's a much bigger picture behind all of the organizations that we deal with and all the people that we deal with that um, register work and that's particularly why I've we've invited Seven to the show because she can talk to us about a much bigger picture of intellectual property theft and what goes on in the modern age and she has got a great story to tell so I'm not going to say a lot more than that but other than if you guys um, like what you hear please check her page or group out on Facebook and any links that she passes on like a YouTube channel with previous interviews with people because I think as General has said, it will blow your mind. Thank you, Chris. Um, I'm going to make a, a link with the, the uh, our guest today and uh, I'm going to allow her to introduce herself. Uh, everybody needs to hear her story. So I'm going to play this piece by uh, Dobidu and Juba, okay, while I make a connection with our next guest. Okay, do we have seven in the building? Greetings, family. Can you hear me? Okay, good, good, good. How Greetings. are you? Can you hear me? I'm not sure. I can't hear. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yes. Hello? Uh, wait a minute. I just have to adjust my sound a little bit here. Okay. Um, can you hear me okay? Because I can't hear you at all. I can hear you. All right. Okay. You're very, very quiet. Let oh, me try wow. to work on this. One second. I'm going to try to get another lead. Because okay. It's really quiet. One second. Okay. We're going to play a piece while our next guest uh, gets herself ready. So once again, you're welcome to the Reggae Business Talk Show. Yeah. Um, I'm just adjusting the sound. Apologies for this. Um, there's a bit of feedback. Somebody else is listening to the show in the background. Um, okay. If you speak a little bit, and then yes. I'll see what we can do to... Okay. to so, you can, can you hear me? One, two, one, two, can, one, two, three. I can hear you now, but it's very, very quiet. I oh, don't wow. know why. Um, 
Yeah. Um, turn up your speaker some more. No, my speakers. Who? My oh, she. She. Yeah, yeah. Turn up her are, are you able to turn <laughs> up your speakers? Me now. I can hear you loud. Yes. Right. Okay. Greetings, greetings, and greetings, family. How are you doing? We're doing fine. Greetings. Well, I tell you what. Let me introduce you to our panel, and uh, we have Christopher Hills. Uh, we have Fitzroy Francis, Lady General Juba. We have the scientists and myself here on the panel, and we welcome you to our show. Thank you so much for appearing. Thank you so much. I see it as a great, great privilege and a pleasure and an honor to be part of what you're doing because it's an area in my life that has um, had great impact, as you now know, in mm. regards to my story. And it's something I've been an advocate about for a long time. So to discover your show from Chris some time back, I've watched all nine, mm. <laughs> nine um, different shows. And uh, I want to yeah. just say a big, massive thank you and howdy to everybody. Um, I hope everybody's well. And I love, I love your show. I love your thank show. Thank you so and much. It's perfect, perfect timing. We need this. It's something that we need um, because we have to change things, mm. obviously. So I, I tell you what, um, I know what Chris has told you prior to coming on to this show. And I want to encourage you to speak as freely as you so wish. Um, I want you to tell us your story. Okay. Okay. Um, well, as uh, you um, kindly said in your introduction, or Chris said in the introduction, thank you, Chris, by the way, um, my background, first of all, I start by telling you a little bit about my background. Um, I come from a very creative family, and I think it's actually not unusual for us as melanated people anyway. Music, creativity, dance, film, it's all part of our heritage. And in fact, you know, even invention, you know, most people don't recognize as, as people, we are, as a culture, we are known for music and dance, but we're not necessarily always known for invention. <laughs> and actually, there's a lot of us that has done amazing things for centuries as far as innovation and bringing things to the market. So it's not unusual in my family. Many of my family were um, gifted in one way or another. But um, my background... Began. I taught myself to play the guitar at the age of five, um, mainly because uh, there was a banged out guitar in our hallway. Mm. And I used to walk past it every day when I was going to school. And eventually I sneaked it into my bedroom and I used to play, um, learn all the songs on the radio. So that's basically how my music career began. And by the time I was in my teens, I started to be a bit more recognized and I was interested particularly at that time in sound and playing around with sound. I was playing with electric guitars. People used to give me guitars, in fact. And um, so I began sort of playing very, very young. Eventually, I went on to session with other people because I didn't want to sign contracts. I was always more interested in building my own thing as far as kind of a company or what have you, um, but to encompass the whole of creativity, you know, innovation, etc. cetera. And um, so basically my musical career went off, took off, and I sessioned for people like Robert Palmer, um, Eternal, and you know, some popular artists. But, um, <clears throat> excuse me, when it came to recording contracts, I always shied away from them because I, <clears throat> I instinctively knew that there was a lot of drugs in the industry. And by the time I was sessioning in my 20s, I actually saw quite a lot of people getting high, etc. So I wasn't attracted to... Um, 
signing with anybody. So that's why. And also I had children. And so I was protecting my children. I didn't want them to be in that kind of environment. So um, in terms of my own story, I know we don't have a great deal of time and we're talking 12 years of my ordeal. Um, but I'll summarize to kind of tell you. Um, yes, as I said, I started off doing music and eventually what happened was my brother who had an, an amazing impact on my life. He was a genius and he was also somebody that was extremely, extremely humble. He was a very, very, very special person. And I'm not saying this because he was my brother. I'm saying it because anybody who met him would say the same thing. And he died, sadly, at the age of 30. And when he died, it was a massive loss in my life. Now, most of his life, he was ill. And I had a very special relationship with him. And the way that he passed was... Um, it was basically, I was with him one evening... And then the following morning, the police came round and told me that he was in St. Charles Hospital and that his body was there, etc., etc. And I couldn't believe it. It came as such a shock to me. And are we talking I just St. Like, Charles? Are we talking St. Charles in Lubbock Grove? Yes, we are. Oh, wow. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So um, when they told me this, and there's a whole story behind that, I did tell it to Chris, but it's too long to say today. But I'm. Mm. Um, just to give you, you know, what led to my circumstances today so that people can understand. Hello? And a little, tiny bit of background. Cause there's, okay. And so um, my brother, you know, when my brother passed, I wanted to do something to the, as a testament to this man's life. He was deeply spiritual. He was deeply learned and knowledgeable about every single subject you can think of. I used to actually have this thing with him where I would look through the dictionary and look for words and say, okay, what does this mean? And I'll give him the word and he'll tell me the etymology of the word, the history, the origins, what countries it transitioned to becoming part of the language we share today. I mean, it, he was amazing. He was very spiritual. So I learned all different about different religions, Sanskrit. Um, he, you know, he introduced me to so many books, J.A. Rogers, Ivan Van Sertima. I mean, our history that had been stolen, our legacy. He was like a mentor, you know, and he because in my life, I'm actually the seventh child in my family. Mm. Even though there was only three of us, I'm actually the seventh child. Now, um, what happened was that my mother, between my brother who passed, was the eldest. Then there's my second brother who's still with us. And then after him, there were four that died before I came along. Okay. And they died in childbirth, etc. In those days, you know, those things happened. Yeah. Couple stillborn, etc. So I, even though there was only three of us, I was the actually the seventh child, and that's where seven comes from. So my brother used to talk to me about the spiritual meaning behind my name and my purpose in life, etc. So I was deeply spiritual as well. You know, my brother taught me so much about the importance of knowing God and putting God first in our lives and being humble and, you know, doing service to humanity in the things we do. And so these things had a great impact on me he had a great impact on me and if in fact I will say if my brother didn't teach me the things that he taught me I don't think I would have survived at to where I am today I wouldn't have been able to endure the things that have happened to me so um, when he passed in 1992 I decided I was going to you know, I put, kind of put music to one side and I decided I was going to devote myself to creating something as a testament to his life that would revolutionize the way that we address health, fitness, spiritual well-being within the entertainment industry because I was already in the entertainment industry. And so I had access to those mediums and I thought, 
wouldn't it be brilliant to do this for my brother and also um, provide something in service to humanity in a way that would um, resonate with the mass populace. So I set out to do that. So I, I actually used to go to hospitals and I actually got access to a lot of hospitals to do, conduct my research because of my brother, because all the people that ever um, treated my brother, all the doctors who treated my brother, they loved him too, because he was special. You know, everybody knew he was special. So when I said, I want to do research, I spoke to, you know, people that were suffering from drugs. I went to psychiatric units. I looked after stroke patients, mental people with mental health issues. You know, the whole gambit, cancer patients, and I was given full access by the doctors, you know, to go in and talk to people to, in order to conduct sort of due diligence and, you know, research on the demographics, etc. Yeah. So eventually, once I got to a, you know, a very good, you know, background, I also did research into TV schedules and what TV companies were producing, what was on the market. Yeah. And um, in cut long story short, I put to work, put myself to work. I worked all round the clock, day and night, writing, putting this thing together. And I, I basically set about putting together a multimedia platform. And that's what I actually did. Now, at the same time, as much as I wrote this stuff about my brother, I also had a friend who had an amazing story um, and she had she relayed this story to me which I also wrote a book about called The Walk. Um, so I was working on the two projects back to back and um, when I completed them I knew I had created something like anybody who's ever written a hit song would know you know you know because of the love that I have for my brother and the love I put into this thing, I knew, I knew, I knew in my soul that this is going to resonate, yeah? Mm -hmm. And so I set about protecting it. I did a number of things. One of the things is that I um, sought, sought trademarks um, because, um, because this, uh, for the purpose of this show, I'm going to interweave some of the things that people, the rights that people have, because obviously, obviously. I'm, even though I'm relating my story, I want to make it, taper it so that people can get wisdom of what they have rights to and, um, you know, just to define some of the laws, etc., and, and, and that kind of thing, um, just because it's a, a, a protective arm. Now, one of the things that is important to establish is that key number one, you have copyright infringement. That category is a category which you could be, you could say, for instance, people who put stuff on YouTube that belong to somebody, etc. That would that would be deemed as copyright infringement. Now, when you're talking copyright theft, that's a slightly different category. Now, copyright theft. My case, you could say, encompasses copyright theft. Now, sometimes with copyright theft, it would encompass tort. So you'd have the Misrepresentation Act of 1967, which establishes um, if somebody, where somebody um, has entered into a contract after a misrepresentation um, and deliberately, and somebody suffers a loss that would be um, actionable under the, the Misrepresentation Act of Tort and also mm -hmm. copyright. There are a number of things within copyright, as we know. And then you have a new category, but it's actually been going for a very, very long time. It's just at this time, in terms of the industry, the industry has steered the machine as to in order to facilitate the whole industry of intellect, oh, sorry, it's called organized IP crime. 
So that's a completely different category. So when we're looking at the whole area of copyright, you're looking at the various different categories. Now, obviously, you know, in the infringement side of it doesn't necessarily affect the person's life personally. But when you're talking about organized IP crime, you're talking about industrial espionage, you're talking about targeting of individuals, you're talking about the whole, uh, basically, mafia. Hmm. It's mafia territory. And that's the area that I was subjected to and have been subjected to. And so I'll tell you how that happened to me, but I just wanted to establish that so that people can understand the difference. Yeah. Now, as far as targeting of individuals for intellectual property, it is widespread. Hmm. There's, the, you know, I've, some people say it's 22 million people, other people say it's less, but it's in the millions and it's worldwide. Okay, so... In my case, what happened was I created this work, knew it was, you know, something special. So I contacted the Law Society. And they, on the basis of jurisdiction, they actually gave me the lawyers called Russell's, Russell's Media Law Firm. And I'm saying this, their name, I don't actually ever omit names because I feel part of the protective mechanism that we have to be in place is to identify the rogue people, right? Because mm. since my case, I know of a number of cases since me of people that are now in the same situation as me. Had there been a register to identify official register in the same way you'd get for pedophiles or whatever, anybody that is putting people's lives potentially in danger, and I'm talking serious danger here, there should be a way as a protective mechanism for families and people because it doesn't just affect the intellectual property owner. These people infiltrate your whole life, mm. your whole life, your family, your friends. They will inter literally infiltrate, they will move into your building, opposite your building. They literally stalk you 24-7, which is defined as gang stalking. Hmm. Now, when this began for me in 2003, if, I, if you typed in gang stalking, you wouldn't see hardly anything. There were one and two cases. You type gang stalking into YouTube and got targeted individuals, and you will see person after person after person after person. That is how widespread it is. Now, for the people that are intellectual property owners or creators, let's say that, because not all intellectual property owners are creators. In, in actual fact, the most people who own and benefit from intellectual property are people don't create nothing. The creators you will find the in more sorry go ahead sorry okay there are more people who are creators with nothing even though they are the legitimate ip owners okay so i basically get go to the law society and uh well i call them up and on the basis of jurisdiction, because I live in central London, they aligned me with this media firm called Russell's, which is in off Regent Street. It's in west of London. For anybody listening um, in different parts of the world. So um, I go in there. I ring them up, first of all, and they make an appointment for me to see Christopher Gossage. Now, Christopher Gossage... Um, was about 26 years old. At the time, I was 38, but I looked about 18 because I look very, very young for my age, like most of our people, you know. So um, I went in there, and one of the things that I, I did was actually create a contract before I went to see the lawyers because I knew, okay, what is going to be there for me to prove if he doesn't if, if he takes what I do so I actually 
before I got to the meeting, I compiled a contract, I put conf confidentiality agreement together, and he signed it, he signed two of them because he saw two different sets of documents. When he saw the documents, this man was literally leaping, he was literally drooling and salivating. He was saying, I know we could we could launch it via Endemore, we could go to this one, this one. He was literally you know, bouncing all the all the companies that he could go to to license it. So I said, Okay, so you know people that would want to license this, right? He said, Yeah, yeah, yeah. He was literally, he was, this is awesome. Did you do this yourself? You know, he was kind of like this with me. Yeah. I thought, wow. But something said to me, this guy is seriously keen. So what I did from that point onwards, I decided I'm not going to communicate with him via telephone. From that point onwards, when I left the meeting, I said to myself, email him so that I have a record of every single conversation that there is. And I advise everybody to do that because one of the things that is very important to establish when you bring a suit is the paper trail. Mm. Now, he was not aware that I had created this con concept after my brother died in 1992. This is fast forward in 2003. So what these companies usually do, once they identify something that is, is, is going to be hot and, and create a new trend, what they will do is they'll put it on the market straight away. But they don't know how long you've had it. So once you, obviously once you come into the arena where you start dealing with lawsuits, you can then produce the fact that you've got a paper trail that goes back some years to establish the fact that you were the owner. Not only did I have a paper trail, I had all my research, I had proof of all the different schedules, the TV schedules for all the networks to prove that they didn't have anything like I created. Not only did they have nothing, they were actually putting adverts out looking for what worked like I had put together. So this was part of my evidence. So um, anyway, this man, I'm communicating with him via email and each uh, I'm filing the emails away. They're not aware of this, obviously. So he gives me copyright, proof of copyright ownership. I already had that because I live in a, a part of um, London whereby it's quite tight community. You know, I'm a, I'm a people person. I love people. And people love me because I love them. You know, it's energy. You know, yeah. if you give people love, people give you love back, you mm. know. And so most of the people in my community, from my post office to all the little shops, I used to take my copyright packages to the post office. So when the meeting was coming up, I told everybody, yeah, I'm going to have a meeting soon. And everybody was like, oh, my God, we're looking forward to it. Let us know how it went. So... You know, so basically there was a number of people that were uh, in the post office that were making sure that my packages were all copyright sealed, properly stamped, time, date, blah, blah, blah. And besides that, I also put a production team together, which was made out of people that I, small team, not a massive team, but it's just people that I had known all of my life or most of my life, or if they weren't like, go back, back, back with me, like um, Fire, um, who's, her mother knew my mother, and so we grew up together, and she's a professional dancer, so she was to train the people to dance, because this package that I put together was to revolutionize the way that we deal with health and fitness, using dance, using all different disciplines from every type of discipline, because I was very much into um, health, and yoga and exercise and keeping fit and all those things and dance dance was a big thing i i actually used to dance as well before I, while i was a musician sorry i also used to dance but professionally i was a musician um until i put my energy into creating this multimedia platform and so um the concept in itself was to use a whole lot of things and and i will tell you the names of the shows uh, after i kind of tell you what happened mm. so yeah so i'm communicating with these people and then 
you know, meanwhile, they are setting up a situation to steal the documents from me because I, I let him read them and see them, but I never gave him the copies of the documents, but I walked away with the signed contracts, yeah? Then he wrote to me and he said, you've taken this firm under instruction as we are now your lawyers and we will uh, facilitate all the, um, the negotiations for the protection of your intellectual property. So I had all this um, in, in writing from them. So what happened was, eventually, I started being headhunted by this man called Richard Hanna. And basically, what he was saying to me was that, look, you've got your own production company. We understand that, but we've got the money to put your thing. We can turn it into reality literally overnight. You know, you've got to trust someone, so why not trust us, you know? And he told me that this woman, Helen Alexander, who was working for Scottish media groups. She also had Ginger Production, which was originally somebody called Chris Evans's company. Chris I don't know if Evans, you remember. Of he course, is. Yes, yes, definitely, yeah. Yeah, now Chris Evans used to have something called TFI Friday. He used That's to have a big right. show. Yeah. Right, and they used to have music guests on the show, etc. And um, she basically stole his formats from him as well but I didn't really understand who this woman was until after the fact right now she had a big case with Chris Evans um, and it came out later on that she used espionage in order to block him in those proceedings so that's something that's very commonly done when you're dealing with big corporations if you have evidence and you have a case against them, they will put a machinery in place that will tap your phones, that will monitor your movements to circumvent you when before you get to court. They'll put their people within the courts, in the administration departments, and they will put them in every single place that you will go to to try to get justice. This is how it really works, okay? Mm. When you're dealing with big corporations, and the more money involved, the nastier it gets, mm. all right? That's when you get into people being whacked, yeah? So what happened in my situation was I had, was headhunted to go to this meeting. Now, the meeting that was being proposed was in, for, in Felton, NTL's facilities. Now, these were new facilities that were just built at the time. We're talking 2003. And, um, or if they weren't built in 2003, they may have been built the, the year before. I'm not exactly sure on that. But by the time I got there, they were literally, they were fresh. They still had the plastic on the tables and the chairs. They had offices, like rows of offices, massive. It was a massive, massive place, the size of an airport, you know, mm. massive, massive, massive place. And um, what, Richard Hanna said to me was, look, you know, these people are big. They've got a lot of money to turn your thing into a reality. You've got to trust someone. Why not trust us? So he invited me to go to this meeting to meet this Helen Alexander. Okay, so one of the people that was part of my production team was a law graduate, Lisa Parme. She's Swedish and she's an angel. She's a lovely woman. And you know, because I, I had different people. I had an accountant, a lawyer. I had um, dancers. I had an Olympic athlete. I had different people from different, you know, spheres. But it was a small team to ensure that we, you know, handle our business, basically. Right? Yeah. So um, Lisa and I go to the meeting. In fact, I didn't really want to go to the meeting um, Initially, I said to her, should we go, shouldn't we go, should we go, shouldn't we go? She said, it's up to you. But this guy was ringing me relentlessly. He was ringing me like five times a day, like every day. Are you coming? Are you coming? You know, and I was like, whoa, 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 what's going on here? This dude is a bit desperate. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I decided I've got lawyers. 
I've got copyright. I've got proof of contracts. The lawyers gave me contracts that they have to sign before even looking at my documents. So I was armed with, you know, as far as the law was concerned, I was armed to the hilts, hmm. you know. And so I thought, okay, you know, it was a, also a friend of mine came over from Germany and she was in a bit of a state. And so I was very tired because she kept me up all night with a, a boyfriend drama that was going on with her. Mm. So I almost didn't go. And you know what? When I look back on that, it was almost like the angels sent me someone to, to stop me from going. But I didn't listen. Mm. I still went. And I, you know, when I look back, I remember that this friend turned up from Germany and, you know, all of a sudden I was like, I've got this meeting in the morning, I can't really deal with this. And she was like, really, really, she was suicidal, it was that bad, you know. So I spent the whole night dealing with a massive drama. Mm -hmm. And so come the morning, I was tired. So I wasn't my usual 100, mm -hmm. you know, I was half there, but I had agreed to go to the meeting so you know I'm a woman of my word if I say I'm going to do something I do it so mm. I said to Lisa you're going to come right she said yeah we'll go so we went there and um, when I got there as I said I got them to sign before um, before actually uh, looking at any of my documents anyway fast forward this Helen Alexander, she's talking at the meeting and she talks about Ginger Productions and she, she sort of smirked as she said, yeah, I got Ginger the production because it was like a little circle of people and everybody introduced themselves. And, you know, when she spoke her piece, you know, people said who they were, what their background was. And she said, yeah, she's a commissioner. She, she used to work for the BBC and, and now she works for Scottish media. She has Ginger Productions and da, 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 da. And so, but when she said it, she said it like, you know, she had this smile on her face. And I thought, I thought that was Chris Evans's company. And she says, not anymore. And she smiled. And I didn't know what was going on there. Because I wasn't fully sharp. Ordinarily, I would have thought, what's that about? You know, but mm -hmm. anyway, she walked off with my documents. I thought, well, in the in worst case scenario, she will you know, she'll be able to, um, we'll be able to circumvent her if she, she try, if she tries anything, right? So this is the 11th of November in 2003. Come, you know, uh, afterwards I contacted the lawyers to tell them that I had the meeting, but of course I emailed them. Come the 5th of December, I'm seeing my work advertised on BBC Channel 4, this station. That's, I'm like, what the hell? Let, let, actually, let, let, let me just stop you for a second. The documents that you gave this person, were they yes. copies or the actual documents? Well, I, have load, I had loads of copies, but she had a set of my documents. Copies, yeah? not the originals? Yeah. Okay. No, no. Okay, go yeah, ahead. But they're duplicated, so right. you know, they were right. all original, if you right. like, because they right. were all run off. I had printers even that were printing my work. So I had a whole system of from the post office to the printers. Everybody was kind of like team player, if you right. like, because everybody was gunning for me. You know, they knew I'd been working hard for years. They knew I was broken when my brother died. They knew when I was doing the research in the hospital. Mm. Then I went to look after cancer and stroke patients. So it was an evolution, you know, and, you know, people lived it with me. So it wasn't just suddenly, you know, I went there with this. It wasn't really like a most people do business. It's like a family, a whole community of people that knew my life in a way. You know, I was a mother, they knew my children, they knew my mother, my father, you know, that kind of thing. So, um, you know, I the documents were being printed and, you know, bounded because I had them bounded and put plastic on the front of them. They were beautifully put together you know, very professionally done. And they always made sure that they did a wonderful job for me. They charged me less than everybody else. You know, oh, go on, give me five pounds. You know what I mean? Yes. It was that kind of thing. So, um, so this woman walks off with the documents and I email her to basically let her know, I know you got my document, just so that there's a record between the exchange 
the, and she said, oh, I'm just looking at budgets, you know, and I'll come back to you. This is probably, this is maybe a, a, a few days after the meeting, I mm. emailed her. Did you give just her to permission get a, to document, or she just picked them up and walked off with them? I gave, I, well, she basically, it was a meeting, and then she picked them up, and she said, oh, I'm really interested, and, you know, can I we take these, or whatever. She asked you, and you gave her permission? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. So, basically, what happened was, um, I emailed her to let her know, okay, you've got my documents, um, just to let you know, those are my documents and they're copyrighted and, you know, I know the market value of that, that, that work. So she came back to me, obviously she was panicking because by that time she's already engaged in, in deals and I'm not aware of this. Oh, you didn't this sign anything? The, no, they signed. But you didn't sign anything? No, they signed for me. So basically, no, 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 no. What I'm saying is I produce contracts so that before anybody looks at these documents, you have to sign that you acknowledge that this is the copywritten work of Charles Seven. In the event that you plagiarize them, if, they, if the work is replicated in any way, you are liable for legal action, blah, 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 blah. Yeah, I, so I Part, but but in order for them to exploit it, you have to sign something that you give them uh, um, the privilege. Authorization, absolutely. So Are this did, is where did we you come. do that? So you no, did. absolutely not. Absolutely right. not. So right. um, yeah, I mean, at that stage, I had um, contracts with them to protect it, and contracts with the lawyer as the the lawyers that will be involved in the no negotiations. But I did not. I did not know that the lawyers were part of the, the whole setup. So the lawyers were, it, you know, primarily they were the people that actually staged this whole thing. Did so the lawyer the meeting, introduce you to her? Sorry? Did the lawyer introduce you to this lady? No, the lawyer didn't introduce me, but the man called Richard Hanna introduced me and he was in communication with the lawyers so obviously mm. they made a com because there were emails that i saw mm. i got privy to mm. and one of the things because what happened just before i went to the meeting i my computer went down so i mm. didn't see any of the emails and he well, emailed the picture sorry i already figured out what him did so the lawyer couldn't make the the, 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 the direct what you call it, introduction. So the lawyer had that somebody has made the introduction to keep himself clear. Right, exactly. So what happened was the man who made the introduction, I didn't realize that he sent me an email of himself that wasn't him. Mm. So this is where he shot himself in the foot because he, I now had proof later on for the court case that he misrepresented himself. He gave a photograph of a, uh, a, a Lord Mayor or whatever. That wasn't him. Not only that, there was an email which said, on my command, unleash sales hell. Now, obviously, they, didn't, they probably didn't even realize that I was copied into that email. But by, you know, because with all these situations, there is divine intervention, especially when you deal with the Most High God and the heart is clean. Certain things come to you in the most bizarre ways, but fortunately, I got privy to this email, but mm. I only saw it afterwards, after the fact. Mm. So what happened was, they, um, obviously, what happened, they went and they made, they chopped up the documents into literally multiple shows, multi dozens and dozens and dozens of shows, and sold them in 126 countries. And in no, fact, no, that's when they... No signature from you. Without any authorization from me whatsoever. Mm. And not only that, what happened was when I became aware, because by the 5th of December now, I'm seeing the advertise on the radio. When I look on the TV, when I see that what's being advertised, I'm like, that's my work. Mm. I couldn't believe it. So now I call up the lawyers, the lawyers stop answering me.
they don't take my call. The, the woman on reception is saying, he's in a meeting at the moment. I'm really sorry, he can't speak to you at the moment. And so I ring back again, and I ring back again. Then it, the penny dropped. He's involved. They're involved. Mm. So now, by the, by the 9th of December, I start having to ring all around different lawyers, and then eventually I made, uh, I secured a meeting with I think called Marriott Harrison, they're based in Holborn. And there's a guy, a man called um, Tony, a lawyer called Tony, Tony, I've forgotten his name, anyway. Be, be, I be, be, before, I, be, before you go any further, please yes. just share with us all those fragmented shows or whatever they did. Uh, mention some of those shows that they turned them into. Okay, so you're talking Strictly Come Dancing in the UK, Mm. Dancing with Stars, that was launched in 2005 in uh, in the US. You're talking mm. Dancing on Ice, You Are What You Eat, 10 Years Younger. I mean, there's a massive list of shows that go from one stre stretch of the, the, the mm. you know, paper to the next stretch. Right. It's all major, major productions. This was a massive turnout. And what happened when I went to see that lawyer? Yeah. I showed him the evidence. I showed him that I was part of this lawyer. He was my lawyer. The contract that was signed to protect me, then you know, from theft, etc. He says, "You've definitely got a case. You've definitely got evidence. Leave it with me for a minute. I'll I'll get back to you." Did you when he came back to me, he said to me, "Well, it's a conflict of interest. I can't take on your case, but your work has been sold in 126 countries, and you're dealing with some big boys." there's nothing you can do. I said, what do you mean there's nothing you can do? He said, there's nothing you can do. I said, but that's my work. How can you just tell me that my work that I labored for for years, you're telling me that I can't do nothing? He said, there's nothing you can do. Trying to so I said, sorry? He's trying to disencourage you. Yes, absolutely. So not only that, he had been paid. He had mm. been paid. Do not take, if you don't take her case, because he was saying to me, when he saw the evidence, he said to me and Lisa, wow, you have a fantastic case. Because I, I had so much evidence, so it would have been a slam dunk. Because yeah. at, by this stage, the work, the deals have only just been done. We've caught them, boom, in the beginning. Obviously, the production is only just beginning to be put in motion. None of these shows that currently existed by that point. So it would have been easy to negotiate something where they say, okay, she's the owner. Let us be fair. We love it, what she's doing. Let's take her, you know, let's, let's give her some sort of deal. But no, nah, they wanted everything. So let me and just stop you there. Let me just stop you there. So you did everything that you were supposed to do in order to secure yourself. You did right. that and they still took the rug from under your feet. Yes. Not yeah. only did they take the rug from under my feet, they sought to destroy me. Liar, mm. liar, liar, assisted, assisted criminology. Absolutely. What we're talking about is paper genocide. Hmm. That's what we're mm. talking about here. Continue. Right? So, I'm like, you kidding me to this man. So, anyway, I go to the police station. When I see that this is going down, I go to the police station. Now, obviously, it's December that by this point. First went to see the lawyer on the 9th of December. So, obviously, it's approaching Christmas time. So, <clears throat> the machine is winding down, right, for the year. So... The police said to me, come back. I said, my documents have been stolen by deception, right? Because by that time, I now pull up uh, on my command, unleash sales hell. This was the email. It said, my name is Maximus TV program selling us. I will have my revenge at this event. The revenge he's talking about for his failed career is to get me to that meeting, take my work, chop it up into bits and pieces and sell it all over the world and do mass carnage on the people. Hmm. That He says, he start talking about murder and unleashing hell on people. I read this email, I was like, what is this? Mm -mm. What is this? It's only when it went into motion. 
that I really, I mean, my hair fell out. Mm. I lost so much weight. I went down like a skeleton, literally overnight. I was a healthy size eight, eight to ten. You know, healthy, somebody that does fitness, that's into, I eat properly, I live well. I, my hair fell out. That was the shock of what happened to me. They, first of all, the first thing that started happening is that I started seeing the van, Carlton Television. Now, where I live, right, I live on the street, in which in total has 14 houses. One side has seven houses, the other side has seven houses, right? So I can st- I live on the corner, so I can stand from my window and see each end of the street. So when I started seeing a van saying carton television circling my street, I was like, what's that? I was like, carton television, what, what, what's going on? Okay, now first of all, let me tell you who SMG are, Scottish Media Groups. Mm. They are affili- affiliated to ITV, Granada, what's the other one, Grampian, and um, all, basically there's a whole lot of companies Bil- that Bilda they are affiliated. Bil- Builder Burgers. Mm. Right, right. That's what we're talking, we're talking Builder Burgers. Now this woman was ex-BBC, right? And if you understand what is going on in the BBC, not only Builder Burgers, this it is a satanic ring. It was a but, satanic but, but I, I ring. Look, I checked out the woman in her, and as you look at her, she looked like all evil. The mm. woman is the devil incarnate. And why do you she, say that? Share with us why you say that. Listen, well, let me tell you what this up, woman did scientist. to me. Let me tell you what this witch of Satan, high priestess of Satan did mm. to me. Right? First of all, I started to see the Carlton television. Okay, so the January came now, I filed a um, crime file, crime reference, I got a, a crime report. Mm. And so that was the beginning of my crime file, which by the way is massive, all right? That's when I started to hear the phones going click. Mm. Every time I picked up the phone, I started hearing click. It was so clear. I was like, what's that? Next thing I know, I start get death threats coming through my, my door. I'm like, what's happening here? Then one time I went to see my, my brother with my mother. Me and my mother are walking down the street. And these white vans, they start appearing outside my house. Because one of the people that was part of the production team, he was doing my graphics, like printing my stationery, my cards, all that kind of thing. So he said to me, listen, you have to understand. When I told everybody that the thing had been stolen and what have you, everybody was gutted. And they said to me, listen, you have to understand when you're dealing with these kind of people, what they will do. I said, what do you mean? He said, start looking out for vans outside your house. Start, keep, pay attention. So fortunately, people alerted me. But even when, even though they alerted me, when it happened, it shock the life out of me suddenly i'm seeing two men outside in a red Renault, just sitting outside my house morning noon and night they're sitting outside my house every time i will go to the window i see these two men there i'm like what's going on the two same men no no and then another time i went to visit my brother with my mother we're walking down the street and there's a white van that is driving slowly beside us and as the van is driving these men have got black balaclavas on and they look at me and they make slit your throat signs Hmm. to me i'm telling you i could not believe it my mother was scared stiff my mother was so frightened she flee flee to the caribbean now my mother is now dead right in suspicious circumstances so is my father both last year Mm. two of my friends dead there is a trail of dead bodies in this case right i'm just keeping it real right now because anybody who's got a child 
who's gifted and talented, you paying tuition fees for your children to go and be educated in this country or any country, and then your gifted child comes up with something that they feel and deem is valuable on a lucrative level IP-wise, your child is in danger. Not just your child is in danger, but you are in danger. Your family are in danger. Everybody around you is in danger. This is what we are talking about right now. Mm. Okay? So, what happened was, between 2000, from 2004, kicked off this whole operation. They put a whole operation around me. Everywhere I went, I was being stalked. I was being followed. Then there come the death threats. This is what made my hair fell out. I used to black out. It was such a shock to me that this could possibly happen. But you know what happened to me? The anger rose in me. I thought the audacity. We wrote to the woman and we said to her, return my documents. Return cease and desist trading with my documents. You do not have consent. You do not have my authorization to trade my labor. This is my co copyright ownership. You stop, terminate right now. When she got that letter, that's when the, the devil business went into overdrive, right? 24-7, they start sending bailiffs around my house. The bailiffs will come in the morning. They would say, they put a letter in there saying that I owe such and such, you know, notice of, of uh, action letter. I'm looking at the notice of action. I'm like, what is this now? When I look, you owe 200 pounds. Give it an hour later, another bailiff comes round with another one. Now it's gone up to 600 pounds. By the end of the day, you're talking thousands of pounds. And this is going on every day. It's, mm. They're coming to my house. So I went to Westminster City, City Council. Um, there's a one stop, which is in an area called Church Street. Those who know London, there's a Church Street market. There was a one stop services. I went in there and I said, listen. I'm getting these bailiff letters coming through my door every day. These people are saying that they're going to do me something. Because I rang up the bailiffs. I said, listen, I don't owe you nothing. He goes, yes, you do. Yes, you do. And he was like, aggressive. Mm -hmm. The man was talking like he was going to come and bust me up and smash up my house. I said, okay, this is part of it. This is part of it. So now it's kicking off. I'm being followed. Now there's bailiffs. Now there's death threats going in the door. And my phones are tapped. It's literally kicked off into one kind of a nightmare. Like how did you know? Leave. How did you know your house was tapped? My phones were tapped because you could hear it. Then what they started to do, they started to talk. Let's say, for instance, we are talking now. Let's say it was a telephone conversation. Mm. You would hear they would interject in the middle of the conversation so that you could hear them. And right. they'd be laughing and they would be um, basically saying nasty things in the middle of the telephone call. Right. And not only that, witnesses like Lisa Parne, when she picked up her phone, mm. her phone would go directly to NTL's offices. Mm. So the, the call center. She said to me, Seven, my phone, when I pick up my phone, it's, it says, um, NTL call center, how can I help you? And she's literally, she hasn't dialed nothing. She's just picked up her phone. So mm. the, basically, they rerouted all our phone calls to, because this is a telecommunications company. Right. Right? So what you have to understand is not only are we dealing with broadcasting, we're dealing with telecommunications, right? Mm. So they had the apparatus to put into place the industrial espionage. Then it got to the stage, Then they, because it, it sort of ramped up very, very quickly. It was like quick. It wasn't like, in some cases, because I've, I've spoken to many victims now, targeted people have reached out to me from all over the world. And I interview them, and I basically, you know, I've been like documenting the different cases in order to get a, a greater understanding of how we need to stop this and understand how it plays out for different people. Different cases play out. But what you can say, safely say, is that the less money involved, the le less it is. When mm. you start talking millions, billions, and trillions of pounds involved in your case, that's when you're talking about serious mafia. Mm. All right? 
that's when you're talking about you know what happened to the 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 the, the place that i was printing my documents god i couldn't believe when i ran went round there all of a sudden it's gone mm. doesn't exist anymore i'm like what happened to it because i went in there in fact i went in there and told them that the work had been stolen and one of the guys in there said to me, oh, I know someone working for Channel 4. I will tell them and I'll find out, see if I can get somebody in there to help you because my work had been sold to all the networks, not just in this country, but in every country of all over the world. So um, the next time I went back to see him, the place was closed down. I could not believe it. What they do is they'll take your money and they'll buy up the whole company to make sure and they'll put them out so that it doesn't so because basically what they do is that they try to erase the record of what happened so they think by getting rid of the the potential evidence but they don't know how much evidence i had i had enough evidence and not only that because i'm a very pedantic person i'm a research junkie information junkie by nature hmm. i pay attention to detail i'm a virgo most people who know Virgos, we do pay attention to detail. So where I went to town, man, and I did my research on what happened. And then basically people started sending letters into the networks to tell people what happened. And so people from the network started, replied and said yes, because it became a well known. They had not seen the money that came into this country from my work since the industrial revolution hmm. that is how much money it was like 1.7 trillion pounds was flooding into the uk hmm. and with that opened the whole spate of corruption right so people were being paid 40 times their wages to keep quiet they put fixes within the police they put fixes within the court they put fixes within the network they put fixes so every office that i went to to try to get some remedy and some body to enforce was blocked. And not only that, they now started making programs about what they were doing to me. So because it was like record amounts of money, they found it so amusing that they started to document it. And the first thing they put out, well, the first thing was they actually gave somebody my name white blonde girl my name people went to the concert they tried to set up a pop band because what they do is they try to eliminate eradicate you so that you are nowhere in the record mm. and they gave this blonde girl my name what they've done to me on a micro level they have been doing to us as a people on a macro level for centuries so it's just it's a script it's a template. It's a program that they run, and they just put it, uh, enforce it into place. Let, let, let me ask you, you think if you were from a different race, you think they would have treated you different? Mm. It's a good question. Now, we cannot take away from the fact that they, this happens to every different culture. But I have to say, as far as the women that I know, like Renetta... Jones, who I'm communicating with at the moment, who created the iPod and the Kindle, she has been tortured as well. Her case is big, big. She, she pioneered the iPod. And so her case, again, she's melanated like myself. Then you've got Sophia Stewart, who came up with The Matrix. She has and Terminator movies, franchises. These are big things on the market. I think... Because there is, historically speaking, there has been, you know, the, 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 the destruction of the black civilization um, and, and the, the, the history of us as a people when it comes to creativity and invention. When you think about our people created the traffic lights, the first person who, who uh, pioneered um, the uh, manufacturing for shoes as a, as a black man, you talk about all kinds of different types of re um, industries. The first person who created the, the tube stations was a black man. When you consider hmm. that there is a long line of people from our um, culture that have been removed from public record, 
you have to factor in race. I think because of the way they don't want us to be on record, they want to push the Einsteins and the Newtons and, you know, all those people, but they don't want it to be known on record that we produce anything because we're classified as slaves. Even though it has to be said, Richard Hanna is from uh, Sierra Leone. He's a black man. Mm. And what you find that, you know, I personally for me, what I've personally experienced, and I believe that Rayonetta and Sophia Stewart will, will say this as well, that when it comes to money, because what we're dealing with is spiritual wickedness. We're talking about a covert slave trade where our people will sell you into that slavery. True. Right? That's what we're dealing with. It's a covert slavery that's going on. And there are people that don't recognize they think because of the mentality, they think, let me get my little portion here and, you know, I'll get what they pay me here. Instead of recognizing that if we all one come together and stop this, we can eradicate that and, and actually own what we create. Instead of people looking at the bigger f picture, if you get robbed, I get robbed, right? Instead of us thinking like that, we, you know, we have people that, that um, are very, very short-sighted. You know, some, if you go on YouTube now, you'll see, because we've part targeted individuals, they, they hire what's called perps, perpetrators. And these perps are paid to troll you, to smear your name in order to discredit you. Because what happens, uh, if they uh, can't uh, obliterate I, you... I, I going through that as, as, as you speak on... Um um, so, so everything you talk in there is like um, I've been through the same exact thing, and they try to spear, uh -huh. spear my, um, try to pull all of my, my name. One of the rumors they've been spreading: scientists blows every system in in California, which is a lie. Uh -huh. I'm the one who can teach all of these guys in California. Let, let let us hear some more of her story, please. Continue your story. Yeah, but just, just, um, just let me come back to you, scientists, just for a minute. You know what? It's the modus operandi. This is the mechanism. It's a script. It's a template hmm. out of the, the protocols of the, the elders of Zion and also out of the Talmud. The Talmud. In the Talmud, it says, it states, this is not verbatim. But I recommend everybody Google the Talmud. The Talmud is their religious scriptures. And it says that they have to steal from us and that they have a duty to steal from us and destroy us. It's written in the Talmud. I, I'm familiar so, with the Talmud. You're not familiar with the Talmud? No, I am. So, I am. I know exactly oh, what it is. All right. So when you understand that the doctrines that these satanic vampires are running by, you start understanding where they're coming from. This is taught to them from, from the womb. It's taught to them from the time they come out of the womb that they are the special ones and that we are nothing. So therefore, you know, we are put through the machine. That's why if you look at the music industry and the entertainment industry in general, look at Whitney look at Michael Jackson, look at James Brown, look at Sam Cooke. You'll see one after the other. You just type in 2015, how many people died in 2015 in the entertainment industry, and you'll see how many young people dead in that industry. Hmm. This ain't no joke, right? And they got the audacity to put people who try to smear my name and make it look like I'm some sort of a fantasist. But you see what, there's a most high God and this is what has played in my case. So what happened now? Because what you have to understand is that we as creative people, not our us per se, but a large portion of the creative industry has acquiesced with this by, they've endorsed it by participating in the madness, either by silence. This didn't happen 
just today. This has been going on long time. Scientists, you can testify to that. I'm sure all of you know stories that are like this, right? Exactly right, sister. You're exactly right. I'm telling you, when I heard Supercat, I started to to become an advocate for Jamaica. Mm. Because what I started learning about what was going on in Jamaica, because people who knew about my case, they were sending me videos and they send me Supercat. And when I listened to Supercat, I nearly cried my eyes out. I said, look at that. Mm-hmm. They, all the artists that have never been paid. In fact, look at, look at Sly Stone. Sly Stone, who is well known mm. from the 60s and the 70s for tunes like Dance to the Music. It's a family affair. Big, big tunes. That man was sleeping on the street. He I'm was in a caravan. Sorry? Them thing there is wickedness and them need to get a lightning bolt and them from the most high. Let me tell you what, it's a new day. Listen, um, um, Sly Stone, he, this year, he won five million five in a lawsuit. But that's because, that's because he's Sly Stone. Sly Stone. Okay, we're getting right? an we're echo. Getting a lot of feedback. We're getting some feedback, yes. I don't know. Oh, it's uh, gone now? Yes, it's gone now. Okay, it's gone now. And the thing is, they have, this is business as usual for them. This is, this is an industry. But it's what's happened with the advent of the internet. They've moved the whole industry towards facilitating IP crime. Hmm. That's what they've done. This is why we have to understand what is going on in order to protect ourselves. People who are writing tunes on their phone, there's people that are using their mobile phone to write tunes. And listen, they can just take your lyrics one time. How can they do that? Explain that to me. Okay, so this is the thing. You're talking about industrial-scale espionage by the GCHQ, right? Which is in the UK and the NSA in America, right? These are surveillance grids. What they will do is what they've moved the whole situation. This is what smartphones are about and the cloud. Once upon a time, you could buy a computer like a Mac, for instance, and you could use that Mac without no problem. Now you have to sign up for cloud if you buy a Mac or you buy any form of electronic merchandise. The whole thing is designed to identify you online all right Mm. so let's say for instance if they identify you as a creative people they can target you from university so children that are very gifted and talented their names will be flagged up and they will be put on the register tracking tracking, tracking device Mm. yes so the the actual mobile phone like you've correctly said it has a gps system so it can track you it can track you basically anywhere you go anything you do on your mobile can be um taken there's cases where people's mobile phone the conversations are being played on speakerphone in police stations i can tell you number of cases where that is the case right so as they're speaking you can even google this espionage via the mobile phone mm. you i know cases where people the police has told the person we listen to you regularly what happens is that your conversations our conversations will be turned into transcripts now depending on who you are if you're an artist or you're a creative person what they're going to do they will use for instance they will use your your conversations our conversations as plot lines for mm. soap operas they will use it for plot lines for script in order to make the scripts look more realistic. They will, for instance, if you have anything going on in your household, you know, your interactions, what have you. <clears throat> so this is why they are giving away to iPhone 6 for free. For one pound, you can get an iPhone 6 now. Sometimes you find they're giving away Wi-Fi. And these things these are all because they need to be able to co- data collect they're collecting the data in order to steal our lives we're not talking about intellectual property theft now we're talking about life theft mm. this is what we're talking they steal your whole life 
what was happening with me, I was having conversations with people on the phone. The next thing I know is on the radio on Ves Vanessa Feltz's show. I'd be like, my goodness. They got the show word for word what I would be talking about with, like this sister rang me up and she said to me, and can I use your bathroom to film something? I said, well, what is it? She says, oh, well, you know, I'm just doing a small project. So I said, tell the truth. I wouldn't like to put anybody in there because one of the things they do, they bug your home. They'll break into your house and they'll put bugs in all over yeah, your but, home. But, but your, phone, your phone itself is a bug. Them do have to do that again. Abs no, yeah, but also well, they want to, if you're not on your phone, they want to listen to you. So yeah. they want to hear. So once they steal from you once and they make money out of you once, they are vultures. They come back for more and more and more hmm. and more and more. And that's how it works. Basically, you become an oil well. They even called me the golden goose, right? Mm. So what they did, literally systematic, it's a systematic operation. So mm. you've got people across the road from my house filming directly inside my house. And they've mm. got thermal cameras. Mm. Did, you ever make, did you ever make it to court? Yes. So I took proceedings because basically I went from lawyer to lawyer to lawyer to lawyer. And what happens is lawyers are fences. A lot of the people are fences. So there's like, uh, uh, when you give your name, it's like there's a, a, a database and your name is on the red list. Mm, and yeah. so it will flag up, yeah? So you call up the lawyer and you want an appointment with the lawyer, but the lawyer is now in community. As soon as you give your name, you've made contact, they'll call, yeah, she's called me. Get whatever she's got. So basically what happens is you go into the lawyer's office and with your evidence and that lawyer will trade your evidence behind your back. Yes. Right. Mm. And so, yeah. So this is what happens as well. So they'll say, oh, OK, I like to see all your evidence. Can you in order for me to take your case, can you um, show me how you created it? And can you actually give me the master documents? So me in the beginning, fool. I went to lawyers and I didn't know what was going on. So I was going from lawyer to lawyer to lawyer, showing them my evidence. And before you know it, I, I, it took a little while for me to twig on. They're, they're selling the evidence. Because what would happen is that as soon as they get the evidence, oh, we can't take your case. We're so sorry. Um, but good luck. Do you know what I mean? Mm. This is what you would get. So what happened on how, how my book got stolen now? Um, just quickly, I went to see Tamsin Allen, who is in the lawyers, Beinman and Partners. Let, listen, write that name down, Beinman and Partners. Just, just, and just hold that thought. Hold that thought just one second. The information okay. given on this radio program is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice. Okay, go ahead. Okay. Uh, one question before we get into that. Were you looking for the lawyers on the internet? Uh, well, I was getting recommendations, basically. I was from looking who? on the internet okay, uh, from here, people here, that here, I knew. Well, here's what. If you're looking on the internet, right, and they're doing all what they're doing, they could just put a cookie on the internet and show you all the liars that are going to tell you, no, you don't have a case, if you don't know about that side of it. What, say that again. Sorry. I, I could put a cookie on your computer, send you an email, with a command yes. at the time you open it, it put a cookie on your computer that says, show her everything that come from Macy's school or Macy's right. shopping department. So if you're looking for lawyers on the internet, well, all yes. liars who I want to show you who is going to tell you to have a case or who is going to be on my side, all of a sudden now you start seeing those lawyers come to you. Right, right, so, right. So, that, that, yeah. Yeah. so you have yeah. to know so Yes, yes, yes. I mean, this is, you see, with all of these things, as a creative person myself, I, I, when you see these situations happen and you get chosen for this kind of madness, in a way, we have been called because this is something that has been going on for centuries and it has to end. So it's a divine opportunity for us to create something where we can change the 
the, the state of play, the status quo. And this is what we are called to do right now, you know, personally me, one, how do we protect people? And, you know, there are lots of different ways that we can, and this is what I would also like to do, because I'm a solutions orientated person. Mm. Although what has gone on what in my on life... Course. Oh, okay. Yeah, I just wanted to put that there as well, because for anybody who's listening, you know, um, and, and I don't want to make them feel like there's nothing we can do. There is things we can do, and I'll come to that in the end. So what happened was eventually after going to lawyer to lawyer, them taking money, shafting me, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, I realized I had to do this myself because it became a situation not just about my work being stolen, but the potential of me being murdered was very, very great. So I had to quickly get the case into court, which I did. Um, I, I issued proceedings in August of 2004. You had, you had us to get the, the case into court yourself? Yes. No lawyer helped I, you get the case into court? No, I studied... I had, uh, because Lisa Pane, who came to the meeting with me, she was a law graduate, so she had a lot of law books. And um, so I basically, during all this ordeal, I was studying the law as well. Mm. And so what I did is I studied the law and I, I basically realized I had to do it myself. So I went around with a dictaphone, I took statements from people and I compiled these statements. I wrote the witness statements for all the witnesses. I had 14 witnesses that were part of the case and I issued proceedings on the 5th of August in 2004 and I'm sure they must have, when they received it, they must have had diarrhea. Well, well you, you know something, you know something is, is a good thing you, you followed through with a court case because... Um, if they must planning to get rid of you, right? Yes. And and there is no court record, then it will look normal. But if you file court record, and all of a sudden something happened to you, it would be like who is the first suspect? Yeah, but you see, what they tried to do was to remove my case from the record. So all okay. running up to two thousand and four, um, you know, I had uh, it, they started to um, the witch hunt deadly okay and it ended up in me having to go into hiding so um what happened was i it's, it's a bit i don't know how much i can say on this show because you know i've been on shows and they say you know can you not talk about that aspect of it so the the, the terror aspect of it so i don't always say it but you know if you want me to tell the truth and tell you what happened Gen to me general generally yeah. you're in what you're saying what what you think Because it goes into events mm. that took place in London that people know about on a bigger level. And so, obviously, um, you know, that's a big part of the story of what happened. And obviously, there's been a lot of deaths and stuff. So, I, it just depends, you know. I, I'm respectful that to even be able to, to share as much as I'm sharing. And so I really take your lead on what you want me to do. If you want me to go into that aspect of it, I will. If you feel that it's not appropriate for this forum, then I will move on well, and just tell you um, what happened with the court case. Run it by me what you... Oh, yeah. In other words, in other words, censorship. Um, is she censored in any way? Are she free to say what does she want to say? Okay, I'm going to say this and I'm, I'm going to allow it to, to speak freely, okay? The views and, and opinions is expressed on this program, so for those persons appearing on the program, and do not necessarily reflect the views and opinions of Stockade Promotions or Stockade Promotions Radio or the Stockade staff. Um, go ahead. Okay. And, and, and bear in mind, I, I would only be able to give you an extra 15 minutes to to express yourself yeah uh before okay. I, I i open it up to the panel to ask you questions because within the next 30 minutes i will have to end the show uh okay. so so as quick as you can you. Uh, yeah just say what you have thank to say you. i have to say thank you as well for giving no, me not a problem never a problem as well you know yeah. um it, it doesn't go lightly for me, you know, gratitude, gratitude to all of you for letting me do, to, to share my story. But, um, yeah, so I, I sued the, I, I, I issued proceedings myself. 
Um, during the, the running up to the proceedings, after I lodged the proceedings, they once you lodge a proceedings, you have the defendant has 28 days to, to answer. either answer. They have to either they can counterclaim or they have to basically admit liability and pay you. And if they don't, it goes into what's known default. as default judgment. Yes, default judgment, judgment by default. Yeah. Now, in the case such as mine, because when I lodged the proceedings, um, I had to speak to, I uh, was lodged in the Chancery Division of the Royal Courts of Justice, which is in the Thomas More building. Now, when you lodge proceedings on the scale of mine, what would happen is that you would have to get an account of profits. When you know that there are so many countries involved and the world is being exploited internationally, um, under different titles, names, etc. And then there's, you're talking TV shows, we're talking merchandising, spin-offs, and etc. And I, wanna, I want to read out the rights that people have as well so that people can understand what you are entitled to. You know, you have what's called a serial, second serial rights. You, first of all, you have the right to be identified and credited as an IP owner. That's number one. You have miscellaneous rights. You have condensation rights, which is for books, magazines. So if there's a spin-off of a book or magazine, you have the rights. You have strip cartoon rights. You have one-shot period periodical rights. You have merchandising rights. You have large print rights. You have quotation rights, online publishing rights, free serial rights. First British serial rights, first serial rights in America, same in Australia. You have electronic rights, you have translation rights, you have rights to royalties and, you know, any form of sub license versions, television, radio, film, dramatic rights and public lending rights. Those are just some of the rights that you have as a copyright owner and, and obviously like, for instance, my franchise has been turned into a stage show as well. And, you know, for music as well, you know, in, in, when you're dealing with music, often you're dealing with uh, li syndicated licensing. So they could play your music on a shopping mall, on a film, on a TV show, you know. It, it's not, it's never just the genre of one industry, you know, that it crosses over, particularly music, more so than any other industry it crosses over. But obviously we're talking about formats, etc. in my case. So with, with, with my case, I issued proceedings, I'd studied the law, contracts. So the case itself was, um, because what you have is presidents that have come before you, and I know you know this just for, for people that are out there, which is other cases that have predated your case, which has established... Case law. Case yeah, law. case law, right. So in my case, I cited a number of cases. One of the cases in particular is called R. V. Willits, R. V. versus Willits. Now, it, that was a case in um, 1901, which basically defined that copyright um, uh, 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 theft and criminal uh, is also a crime. It's also defined as a crime in some cases. Now, in this particular case, it involved print music. Now, at that time, the, the author who of the print music, they stole his print music. This is the time of Scott Joplin and all those kind of um, artists, ragtime and that kind of those genres. What year is that? 1901. Oh, damn, it's been going on from that time. Yes, 1901. So that case is called R.V. and Willits. And in that case, I'm not sure if it's Templeton J., which is the judge in that case, but there was the judge in that case established the, the nexus between copyright infringement and criminal, and, and, and it being a crime. Because in that time, what they did, they stole this man's music and they were mass producing it and manufacturing it on a global scale. And there was another case of a guy who was doing Formula One drawings for the cars. And in that case, they actually subjected this man to humiliation, terror, the whole nine yards. And so these cases really established that, that copyright can be dealt with in the court of law in relation to crime. 
But in my case, because there were different areas, so you've got contract law, you've got the breach of the contract with the lawyers and the people. So that was breach. So that's what contract law. Then you've got misrepresentation. So that's tort, the law of tort. And that would basically give you damages for misrepresentation. That's to do with negligence, anything like that, that comes under tort, yeah, which criminal, is criminal, criminal now. Yes. So you've got criminal law, which is the 1976 and 77 Act, which established when two or more people come together to commit a crime or to conceal a crime, it's known as a criminal conspiracy. So then you've got the criminal side of this as well. But then obviously within copyright law, there are various aspects of copyright law for strict liability. Because when you, when you think of law, you have to think of a chess game. Think of a chess game. That person's going to put a piece, move a piece and you have to move a piece. But in the game of chess, you have to move so that you checkmate your opponent. That's on the civil level, right? So I, you know, I basically de dealt, used the law in order to put them in a corner where they couldn't move, right? So I basically, what you do, you frame your circumstances under various parts of the law. So I had contract law, which was breached, and I could prove it. I had tort, I had copyright, and I had criminal. So those different, in all of those areas, they were finished, yeah? They didn't have a case to answer, so they had no defense. They had no defense. In America, they, ca they call it willfully conspirate to, vi to violate the, our steel copyright. Right, absolutely. So you've got gross... Ex, um, e, uh, gross infringement of pre, copyright. Premeditated pre infringement. Yes, absolutely. Because everybody has the right to be identified as a creative person, especially if the work has been um, oh. exhibited oh. in public. And then also you have the right to object to derog derogatory treatment of your work and you as a person and the false attribution to other people because as much as they chopped up my work and sold it to different people they chopped it up and gave it to different people that they wanted to give to pretend that it was their work so on that level you're talking fraud as well did so they what, it, who did they put in the register of, as, of the work did they register the work to their self well basically they attributed it to a number of different people and here's hmm. what the Berne Convention was launched in order to facilitate this so that all the countries would be on the same playing field when they're selling the rights. That's how the book, because the Berne Convention was put into place. It was originally in the 1800s, but then it mm. was relaunched, revisited in July of 2004. Now, the woman, Helen Alexander, who stole my work, she got awards for the biggest trade and publishing in 2004. She got awards for my work. And she had Everybody. teeth. Sorry. Sorry? And she yeah. had teeth. Yeah, so meanwhile, because she was getting awards, she was making sure I was terrorized. Because she knew that any time she's busted, you're talking about all those countries that I've put, Big investors have put their money into this. People have bought the franchises, right? So she, they were desperate to stop the truth from coming out. So what happened was they started the witch hunt against me. So then the death threats started getting worse and worse and worse. All kind of madness was going on as we was getting closer to the court case. Then they were using these fake bailiff's letters to try and put me in prison. You know, because they obviously it was all fraud. I didn't owe nobody nothing. When I went to the Westminster City Council, um, the one-stop services, there was a girl in there. I showed her. She said, you don't owe anybody no council tax. Why are they coming to you for council tax? This is what they use. Because they use things like council tax, which is legitimate ways to try to get into your building so that they can carry out their assassination or whatever they want to do to you. So they'll use the, the guise of fake council tax that you owe council tax, then they'll send their hitman into the building to do what they want to do to you. But what happened was everybody in my building knew. So what they did, they actually set up to remove all the smoke alarms in the building. They said, oh, while I was in court, they said, we have to change all the smoke alarms. 
Now, I knew exactly what they were doing. They put cameras into every single person's apartment to try to monitor what I was doing, who I was talking to, because the neighbors in the building knew what was happening to me. One of my neighbors bought me a, an, an alarm so that if I walked down the street and somebody approached me, I pulled the lever and it would let off a siren. So people knew and, you know, people were protecting me. I was very, very lucky in that respect. So anyway, what happened eventually, as we led up to the court case now, they had automatic, um, I had default judgment because they knew there was too much evidence. After speaking to all those lawyers and handing in what some of the evidence that I had, they knew that they, would, they, they, they were they finished. Didn't answer. They didn't answer when you filed? No! Some of them didn't answer. Most majority of them didn't answer. So I had automatic default judgment. So what happened was the court said to me, Initially, I made it a specified claim because when you issue a claim, they're going to ask you how much is the claim worth, the value of the claim. Let's say it's £10, so you will put £10. So let's say, for instance, you don't know how much the person's made because it's global and you, know, you haven't had an account of profits. Then you would put unspecified and it would be for the court to decide the amount Okay, after seeing all their, their things. So what was happened, they ordered... For the case to come to court in 2000, July of 2005, all right? So, so between running up the, the uh, running up in July, from early July, it got hell. It became hell. So what was also happening is that they were breaking into my home, and they were making programs about all the crimes that they were doing to me. It started with the hustle program. First, they had a girl had, who had my name, and listen to what the girl's album name was. A not-so-tragic cover-up. Chasing victory, a not-so-tragic cover-up. This is how blatant they did it. They gave somebody the name Charlie Seven. Now, my name is unusual, right? So when people went to the concert thinking it was me, they said, what is going on? They saw this person with my name. When you look at the album, what the album was called, a not so tragic cover-up so when you actually factor that in you start realizing this is beyond just somebody stealing the work this is malicious there is a ritualistic side to this that's when you start recognizing that we're dealing with satanists we're dealing with some twisted psychopathic minds the next thing i saw was that the people that were all involved in the crime they made a program called Hustle, and it was called The Con Is On. And all the people, from the lawyers to everybody, was given a character in this film. But I was able to identify which person was which, who was Helen Alexander, who was Christopher Gossage. And so when I went onto the website and I saw it, and the, the slogan on the radio, when they advertised this show in 2004, it said, you get nothing for something. You know, and it was all it was all in relation to the situation. I couldn't believe it. They're using the media to carry out this thing. So then I find out now what they're doing is they hire ghost writers to script what is going on in real life and embed it into TV shows. So up comes this program called The Hustle. And on the website, it shows... Or they've got a jargon for every aspect of what they're doing to me. Hmm. So they said, first you lure the person by it by deception to the big store. The big store was the NTL facilities. Then they say, they give you the long con. You can get somebody for a long con or a short con. What they, they, they targeted me for a long con. In other words, they intended to steal from me forever. So they opened a trademark company because they knew i had got the, ordered my trademarks they opened a new trademark company called 77 right mm. so now when they when they when i started to see and put the picture together all the conversations that i was having with people was being turned into something i mean this was so sinister i could not believe it I could not believe that they could use the media so blatantly to advertise their crimes. So now I start documenting everything. 
So everything, even when I went to court, they opened a TV show on ITV, which is an affiliated company to Helen Alexander's company at the time, Scottish Media Groups, right? She's since moved up the ranks, right? To become Dame Bilderberg Alexander, all right? But anyway, what happened at that time, they, they created a program called The People's Court on ITV. Now, you go on Google, you'll see it. And you look at the timeline of all these shows being released and my, the events that were taking place in my life. And you'll see back to back, as something was kicking off, as I issued the proceeding, now there's a new show called The People's Court. So it's like a mockery. It's like they're mocking and they're gloating. Like, ah, oh, you little nothing. What can you do? We can steal your name. We can steal your identity. We can steal anything. What can you do? You're nothing. This is basically their whole... Um, MO, you know, because they feel that they're a big network of people. It's a crime syndicate. And we as individuals, we've got no power. That's the reality. So what happened was, in this program Hustle, they even tell you, we have fixers in the police, in the government, in the... They show you everywhere they got fixers blatantly in your face. So they're doing it in plain sight. So what happened now, I, somebody told me about Sophia Stewart who had created The Matrix because her case was going on in America. Back to back, both of us, there was me for the all my TV shows, Strictly Come Dancing, Dance With Stars, which was in America, and all the other productions. And her, she was fighting for The Matrix movie and The Terminator. So somebody said, get in contact with her because she was a paralegal. I thought maybe she would have some connections in the UK because I had established by then that you can't go to no lawyer here. Everybody's on the payroll. So you can't go. You can't trust none of them. Right. If it's not your family, <clears throat> you can't go to these people. So eventually I went to um, Sophia and then Sophia I spoke to her very shortly, but they cut off the conversation. They were sabotaging the phone line. And um, before I knew it, there was an advert in on the paper which said, the same people who stole from Sophia were now doing a production about blowing up the London trains. I was like, oh, my God, they're going to do it. They're going to do it. These people are crazy, going to do it. So I start sweating. And panicking and I ran from building to building I went to the police I was crying I was begging people please I showed them my court case I showed them I've got a case coming up in July there's a potential for these people to blow up the trains I went to the magistrates um, court in Marlborough there's a place called Marlborough for those who are not in London um, it's in West one I went there and I was given to speak to a man called Charles Reese who was a clerk I went in there, I was in tears, I showed him my evidence, I told him that my case is about to kick off. This is June 2005. I said, there's a witch hunt against me to shut me up, but there is a cartel that's a criminal cartel operating in the mainstream media, and you know, they have fixes everywhere, and I'm concerned about the public. So he looked at me, he took time to look at the evidence, and this man went white like a sheep. He knew I was telling the truth. He said, the only thing you can do is that you can take... He said, have you been to the police? I said, I've been to the police. The police are not doing nothing. He said, you can take proceedings against the police to take proceedings against the cartel. I said, there's no time. My case is supposed to come up in July. There's no way. I need protection. I need something. You need to put an injunction on these people. So he said to me... Um, Cut a long story short, he said to me, there's, there, basically, that's the only remedy that I could do is to take proceedings against the police if the police are not already taking action. At that point, I realized I had to go into hiding. I knew because it seven, was dangerous. Seven yes. Express, General. Yeah. I need to check you guys just on time at the moment. And seven. Okay. It, it's, Can it's, I suggest that? Um, people link with Seven's Facebook group and her YouTube channel and also look up the Farrell Report, Google the Farrell Report. Yes. Because you'll yes. get a lot more information from that than we've got time to do on the show today. 
Well, okay, um, um, right. Let, Can let, I just let, quickly let, summarize? Let, just quickly, it would take me like one, I, two I will seconds. Give you, I'll, I'll give you another up. 10 minutes. I'll give you 10 minutes and then we'll just round it up. Okay, so just to quickly summarize what happened in the end, I did go into hiding uh, where I remained for three months and I couldn't get to court as was scheduled in July of 2005 as we know what happened the planes the, the trains did um, there was an attack and it wasn't as the narrative said and anybody who wants to um, see the fullness of the story I do tell the story showing the documentation so that you can actually see the physical evidence I, I tell the story and I show it as it as I go along you can go on to Alfred Weber's YouTube channel he's a judge in the USA um, no, actually, he's in Canada, and it's on Alfred Weber, that's W-E-B-R-E, -E, Alfred Weber's channel, YouTube channel, and you just look for Seven Gate. And um, we did the interviews between December and January of this year, December last year and January this year. Anyway, I was smuggled from hiding. And after three months uh, in there, I wrote to all kind of people for help to try and get out of there. You know, my house was surrounded. It was on the news. I never seen anything like this. I was on the floor when it actually took place. They shot a man because my, fa my full name is John Charles. So when I saw the guy got shot, I knew it was a warning to me. They came up into the building. They shoved the paper underneath the door to let me know it was them that did it, even though they made it look like Muslims. It had nothing to do with Muslims. So I eventually got smuggled to the police station and I got into court. And then when I got to court, my, my court case was basically removed illegally from the court record so I had to go to the court of appeal and I went to the court of appeal I brought my bundles and basically I won the case and then the case I won it fly I had, there were two hearings on the 23rd of February and also the 2nd of May of 2006 is when the actual case got heard before Lord Justice Chadwick and Sir Peter Gibson and this judge was fair, you know. I was. I said to him, if you don't do justice after what I've been through, I will take down your system. I will take it down. I will issue criminal proceedings against every last one of you. And he looked at me and he said, I well believe you will. He knew I wasn't messing around, right? They had destroyed my life and the hell I had seen, you know, so anyway, I did win. And then the case was issued to go back to the Chancery Division. And it went basically to, to, to one judge called Warren. When I arrived in court, they removed all the documents. All the files were missing, all the evidence. And they told the judge that I was a fantasist and I had no evidence. So when I showed the judge all the evidence, which was hidden because they by their fixes within the administration departments, that judge was about to put them into court prison for contempt of court so they removed the case from him they doctored all the court documents to try to remove the case from him but that didn't work so I had to go via when I went back to the courts again the judge judge Warren adjourned the case for six days six days later when I went back the case again was removed so I had to go to the office of judicial complaints I had to go to the bar council I had to go to the law society I had to literally fight fight and then eventually they had to list the case again and when I listed the case again I won flying colors that judge he looked at me with so much respect he could not believe the case that little me brought before him he was winded he said to me it was the best case he'd ever seen in his whole career with, as a judge. Without a lawyer. He didn't have any lawyer. No lawyer. I did it myself with my witnesses. Yeah. I compiled it meticulously because I knew, say, that they were trying to kill me. This was life or death. So when he saw all the evidence, he said to me, he, he saw, I, got, I got the audios. But he said, and I, I can let anybody hear the audios, he said it was um, on a particular level of truth. He cannot doubt 
what I say is right. And basically, I was awarded copyright, everything. The only thing that was supposed to happen was an account of profits, which was supposed to happen two, year, two years previous because I had uh, been awarded default judgment even before then. I was supposed to just go in July to get my damages, you see. But what happened is that it all got obstructed. Anyway, they after I won, they covered up the fact that they won. They changed all the documents over to make it look like they won and I lost. They wrote in a law journal that there were no witnesses, there was no evidence. So then I had a two-year battle to get the courtroom audios. So I fought for another two years. And eventually, um, because they killed the judge, eventually I was awarded the audios because the judge was deceased. deceased. So there was no way to prove... Well, they say that he died of a heart attack, I believe. But you know, there's there's a lot. It's a it's another suspicious death. Well, well, let's just leave that that theory right there and and just just round it up for us, please. Okay, so basically, what happened at that point? I got the audios, and unfortunately, I was put on a targeting program, like a permanent targeting program. So it became survival. I had to try to fight for my life. So I remained in hiding for quite a long time until I met Tony Farrell who wrote a report who's a, a whistleblower he was working as a police intelligence analyst and he discovered me talking at a uh, demonstration and so anybody who wants to look at the report is called the Farrell report Farrell report f a r e l .net farrell report.net and um, there is courtroom audios there is a number of things that we're doing at the moment. We are, uh, we want to set up an official register. That's one of the things that I mentioned. We have an event where we want to uh, highlight um, it's artists against IP crime, and we're going to incorporate musicians, artists, etc. So that's a big thing that's happening. And um, you know, I'm I'm basically bringing this to the forefront because what happened to me shall never happen to another person well, and so i give you thanks to everybody for letting me share that story um obviously it's 12 years so it's hard to summarize yeah. um in that short amount of time but um yeah that's let, kind let, of let, let me the, just say that i i really applaud you for for even going as far as you've gone so far i mean you mentioned 12 years of of this happening and that is just remarkable. I must say that when Chris initially told me about your case and I pressed play on YouTube, I just couldn't stop watching what happened to you. He then alerted wow. me to the fact that there was a couple more features on YouTube of the very same thing. I haven't been into part two yet, but you know, I didn't need convincing that you needed to tell your story on our show. Um, wow. Thank you. I, I want to come to the panel because I really must end this show. But w what I am going to say to you is I'm going to be talking to Chris and me and you will talk off air and, and I'll be inviting you back to another show. Um, right. But also, right. I, I just want to quickly sorry. come to the panel. If there's anybody on the panel, could you please make your questions very, very quick to seven, please? And, and we'll start with the scientists. Okay. Well, Thank damn, you. though. Um, She's a very, very brave woman. I think she have the bird. She come from the Shaka Zula tribe. <laughs> um, oh, just, wow. uh, hey, I just wondered one thing. Did she write a book yet? I put that down. That's to what a, book. A, a, a number one seller is I see a book. You need yes. to write that stuff wow. down. Yes, it's definitely. a great yeah. story, no? Yeah, um, yeah, yeah. That's some of the things I'm working on. I'm working on a number of things, but at the moment there are people in danger. So my emphasis is to protect the younger generations, and to create networks, safety networks for um, creative people. So the emphasis is there. But I am working on all of those things as well. And as I said, we are doing an event, which is to get seven artists to perform over a period of seven days in seven countries in order to transmute that negative energy and vibration that they've attributed to something that I made for the, as a sacred thing. We want to bring people together in a loving way to change it, to highlight the issue, 
but also to, you know, to just put the right energy back to highlight it in a way that will create awareness and positivity. So that's one of the things. Well, We're also looking to put legal teams together, you know, and because um, obviously I have documentation that proves that I'm worth a lot of money. I owed a lot of money. It hasn't been paid to me at, as yet. That money I want to donate. I want to help my family and friends, obviously, but I want to donate to um, to the humanity, to build um schools, hospitals, uh, protection me mechanisms for creative people, people with autism, you know, that money has become blood money and it has to be taken from them and used for something positive. So we're looking for people to build the most powerful te legal team on record to go after this money and use it in the purpose of service for humanity, for protection of humanity. So that's kind of another thing. Um, so thank you, thank you. Is that Dubby? Dubby? Dubby Doo. Yeah, Dubby Doo. Okay, um, thank you. You know, that's such a great idea because just to, just you saying about a lawyer's network, it would be great to set up a counseling for all artists to have a set yeah. from everybody wide and far to say, these guys are going to counsel young artists coming into it and, know, and, and to know that they're not going to trick people and stuff. The same thing with a lawyer network to help young you know, musicians and artists, it'd be great if we could get a counseling thing where we have people to counsel people through their first records and making music and how you should do it, not only like a, a radio show like that. So, man, I just applaud yeah. you so much. Write a book. That's all I can say is write a book. Yeah, yeah. Thank <laughs> it, it, you. It, Thank on you, that book, it, it seems like a movie. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. Yeah. Well, actually, people have said, suggested it, but um, you see... Because they made me invisible for so long, you know, I'm kind of like having to, you know, build the awareness yeah. about IP crime as, as, as a thing itself. You know, I have done conferences. I can show you where I actually sp I spoke at the International Jurists and Writers Conference last year before chief justices and magistrates from around the world. And I was asked to sp speak on media and ethics and also the protection of IP. So, you know, I'm a, an advocate of this area. This is why I love what you all are doing. You know, I, I, I just applaud you. You know, I applaud you because this is so long out of overdue, you know. Mm. I'm also launching a TV show. I'm going to be launching. So I would love to have all of you on the show. You know, those of you that are in the UK, we can, you know, meet to come and be appear on the show. And those of you who are in the UK, we can Skype and put you yeah. on the show that way. Scientists, yeah. I'm doing an audio series called Stolen Lives, mm -hmm. which is all about targeted individuals. So I'll be telling the story, you know, with people, interviewing people about this story. I would love, love, love to interview you about what has happened to you and anybody else on the panel who's experienced that or if you know somebody um let me know i like to interview them and put them on the series so there's a lot going on there's a lot going well on. if if i could say quickly um your case and uh, what you just told us um i never heard anything like this in my life uh, yeah. even though what i got you i shocking uh, thank chris to bring in this lady to introduce us and i hope and I know the people with authority, they're listening. But this is not a joke. So much of us who didn't, because I didn't know this lady before, couldn't be saying the exact same thing. It's mm, the exact same course. thing Every, everybody is saying. So this is a very real thing that I hope the ears who are listening um, need to pay attention and fix it. Yes, yes absolutely. Let, let, let me come to uh, uh, Fitzroy. Is Fitzroy, yes, yeah, Fitzroy yeah, would you like yes, to say anything to, to Seven before we end the show? One thing I can say, she reminds me of Queen Nzinga, who defeated Alexander the Great. I'm telling wow. you. And give, and give him credit, because Alexander the Great, a lot of people think him conquer Africa, but when him come to the Alps and see the elephants and the, and the lions and the tiger, and Queen Nzinga defeat him, he flee okay. back to Europe. And I'm tell them, you wow. see a queen, you see a queen who have got in wow. her. Wow, yeah. you know, Alexander the, the Great, go back wow. and tell them, say, say he's a, a queen who have wow. got What's in her. What's the name? Queen Nzinga? Queen Nzinga of Matamba. 
Okay, I need to write that down. You, you, I have, the blood. you have the blood in your system. And, I, and, 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 and that's all I have to say. And I'm thank you very much. She I have learned a lot. She no, believe me, it's a story. It's a, you know, yeah, man. All right. Yeah, let, but let's you know, there's more of start. us than there's more of us than you would imagine if you speak oh, yeah. to. Um, you know, uh, for instance, uh, Renetta Jones, who I'm just dealing with, she reached out to me, and a number of people reach out to me. And I'm telling you, there's a lot of people, even Chris can testify to this, because you know someone as well, isn't it, Chris? I know a couple of people. That's in the same, and it's the same lawyers and everything. You know, so this is a lot more widespread. It's just that mine is more extreme. You see, when you, the bigger the money gets, the nastier it, nastier it is mm. for the, for us fighting it, you know? Let, so, let. but you, you, I didn't really have any choice, you know? I didn't have no choice. If you want to survive and you want to live, you've got to fight. You've well, got to fight. Let, let me, let me come to Lady General before I, I get you to give us some information how people can follow you before we end the show. Can so I Lady just say something first of all? I, um, and okay. Because, because of what we've spoken about in depth, we need to go back a couple of shows when we were talking about unity in the reggae yep. business. Yep. Yes. Because yep. unity is strength. Yes, and absolutely. If you if people continue to allow egos to dominate, we're going to get stolen all over the place. Yeah, it has to become all for one and one for all. It does. If you suffer, I suffer. You mm -hmm. know, and I, I have a little. You know, I had a divine download about that. Can I quickly, quickly say it before I speak again? I just before, while it's here, I would like everybody out there. To right now, start practicing love in action. Knock on your neighbor's door, see if they're all right. People in your family, do something for people. Do something to help. Try to alleviate the suffering around you. This is where it starts. If you know somebody is suffering around you, do something. Do something loving and positive for somebody. Make that your mission this week that you know, say that to this week, I went out of my way to do something. Don't ask for nothing for it. Give. Give of your time and give of your positivity to someone. This is a little thing to just change the frequency around because there's too much selfishness, wickedness, greed, avarice. We have to change that paradigm. And not even just in the reggae industry, just as a people. We need to look out for each other. And we have to start by doing that. So that's I just wanted to say that. Let me come to Lady General before uh, we get some information. Lady General. Yes, uh, thank you very much for appearing. And thank you for sharing your very deep story with us. We appreciate it very much. Thank, thank you so, you so much. much. Oh, wow. I appreciate, I appreciate the fact that you've taken the time to hear me, you know, thank you. Because through me, I'm speaking also not just for myself, but for the voiceless and for the future generations as well. Okay, give us some information, uh, Seven, as to how we can, you know, follow you and some of your YouTube channels or whatever it is you want us to know. Share that with, with everybody who's logged in. Okay. Well, um, as I said, if you want to listen to the story, um, me tell my story on with Alfred Weber, the judge in the U.S., you can go to YouTube, Alfred Weber, A-L-F-R-E-D-W-E-B-R-E, -E -E, and that's Weber, and it's Seven Gate, and it's the lawsuit Seven Gate. He's called it Seven Gate in relation to Watergate because of the okay. scandal behind it. So, just so people know, so Seven Gate, you can also go so. to the Farrell Report. Sorry? I thought so. When I saw Stargate, I said, I think he's making reference to Watergate. Yeah, Seven Gate, <laughs> yeah. He came up with that name and it is apt, it's fitting. So, it's Seven Gate, and um, you can also go to News Inside Out, which is www.newsinsideout.com forward slash Seven Gate, and you can read articles. 
Um, Seven Gate uh, Facebook page, which I have to give a big shout out to um, some wonderful, wonderful people who have come forward to help put a Facebook page together. Um, so that's um, Seven Gate on Facebook. There is somebody doing a site called Charlie Seven, but that's not me, right? That's one of the things they do. They will start to open up things with your name all over the place, and it's not me. Yeah, so I don't have no Facebook page with my name like that. So if you see it, it's not me. There's somebody faking it. Yeah, so my Facebook page is Seven Gate, and uh, what else? There's the Farrell Report, which is a report on the case, um, and that's www.thefarrell f a r double r e double l report dot net. And that's the whistleblower, Tony Farrell. I'm actually in the process of building a TV show, uh, sort of launching a TV show, which will address all this sort of thing and much more, but from a solutions point of view, you know. Um, so that will come soon, and I will put it on the Facebook page. And also, if anybody wants to take part in the Seven Gate um, co um, Artists Against IP Crime, and get involved in that, either if you want to perform or what have you. We're going to do it in seven countries, so we need seven different countries to get involved. At the moment, we have interest from quite a few countries, but we'll do a part one, part two, part three. So, as I said, um, if anybody wants to get we are, involved... We are, we are on your team. Sorry? We are on your team. Yeah, definitely. Wow, I am on your definitely. team. <laughs> yeah. With family, you know. I, basically, here's the thing. I'm building an army. You see, because they got an army. These Satanists, they got an army. I'm building God's army right now. I'm gathering God's people to rise up and shut this thing down and build something that is going to be fair for everybody, right? And so this is what my objective is right now. So... Um, it's team. Anybody who wants to be team and get involved, you know, I'm not opening crowdfunding at the moment because my intention is to go after my money. Yeah, it's about seven trillion pounds. Um, it's a lot of money. We can do a lot of great things for humanity with that money, set up our own industries. So, you know, and you, I also want to say this, we need to have new ways of protecting our intellectual property. Do not use the painted office because you could find yourself in danger putting your paintings and your inventions in there. So, you know, we're looking at new ways, you know, networks, creating our own networks where you give your work to trusted people in your network in the same way we used to do partner. Remember you used to do partner? You know, a group of people come together, they all give five pound every week until, you know, the, you collect, everybody collects. Well, a group of people in your own network that you trust and you, when you actually create your IP, your IP protection, you put it in an envelope, you seal it, you stamp it, you notarize it, and you make sure that it's given to trusted people so that if people try and steal it, then you can bring them as witnesses as well. So we're looking okay. at all different ways, the protective side of the yeah. whole thing. Okay. I tell you what, we have to end the show. I want to thank you once again, Seven, for um, agreeing to come on the show and sharing with us what you are going through. And uh, everybody in our chat room uh, who has uh, contributed, you know, with comments, uh, Andrea to Apache Indian, Lady General Mamadi, Monarchial Entertainment from Barbados, Mr. Busby, Peter, uh, Peter, yeah, and uh, Sharon, and anybody else who's on the outside who's, uh, you know, sending yeah, messages. Mr. Roddy Campbell. Talk. Thank you so hey, much. Yeah, Mr. Roddy Campbell. Say, hey, I Roddy. Hey, Roddy. Thank you for your beautiful email. Oh, my God. You touched my heart. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> okay then so thank yeah. you so much guys we have to end the show enough respect every single time seven uh yeah. god bless you and guys we gotta get out of here thank you so much okay. seven okay take care everybody thank you yeah, yeah okay. thanks Bye. thanks gentlemen. god bless everybody yeah thank you Bye. so much yes Bye. Bye. Yes, yeah, so that's the uh, Reggae Beast talk show right there. We have to end the show due to time constraints. I have to definitely get out of here. And thank you all for your listening ears. Um, 
once again um check us out in two weeks time we'll be back here in two weeks time let's see when that date will be that will be like the uh, 6th of uh september when we will be back here on this show um so i'm gonna get out of here uh somebody called again uh who is that uh sorry 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 all right all right i'll call you back yeah okay then all yes. right so we're going to get out of here for real. And, uh, and uh, yeah, check us out in two weeks' time. We'll be back. I'm out of here. One love to each and every one. The information given on this radio program is for informational purposes only and does not constitute legal advice.